You got it locked on Rodeo Radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now, and I say, Yo, Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play in Don't shit mixed by Dr. Dre Since I was a youth, I like Compton Now I like the motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape for two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game And I'm in it Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right, making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 263. And before I introduce my very special guest of the night, I just want to thank everybody who tuned in, everybody who liked, commented, subscribed, everybody who's on the live chat, everybody who's talking shit, everybody who's not talking shit. I th- I'd like to thank everybody who liked or disliked. It doesn't matter. You guys are still watching. So much love, much respect to all you guys. Hope you, hopefully you guys are having a blessed weekend. And uh, uh, just a quick reminder that this show is sponsored by Nacho Granny's Cookies. Nacho Granny's Cookies, okay? I'm going to bring them out so we can grow up on them while we're live. We got some bomb chocolate chips, and we got even some medicated ones. So if you guys want to get at her, once again, go on the description. Her Instagram will be there. Click on the on the link, and it'll take you straight to her page where you can go and order your damn cookies, medicated or non-medicated, okay? So once again, this show has been sponsored by Nacho Granny's Cookies. So other than that, you know what? Um, if you want to be on Rodium Radio, submit your music, Okay. Submit your music to uh, rodeonradio at gmail.com and uh, submit it with music, submit it with a, a short bio, and submit it with videos. So other than that, um, you know what, my my special guest, uh, I know we're going to have a great, great time. You know what, the, I truly believe this man needs no introduction. He has worked with some of the greats in the game, and uh, but we're going to jump right into it and let him speak for himself. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce Nocturnal. How you doing, Knock? Welcome to the Dark Side. <laughs> that was dope. I like that. You know what? You're the first one that did that, man. That was dope, man. I like having fun. You good? Yeah, man. So, yeah, man. you know what? You know you're my elder, so I got to have much respect. Oh, wait. Let's let you know I'm, I'm glad you guys have been doing this for a while and, and been keeping it real. I just I appreciate everything you guys do, and I appreciate you guys inviting me here. I thank you. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And I'm glad you're here, Mac. You know what? You have a lot of history. I love your music. There's a lot of fans out here that love your music and they're dying to hear what Knock is going to be having coming soon. But before we get into that, because we have we have enough time. Mm-hmm. Uh, today is Sunday, man. How's your weekend been like? Let's go back to Friday. Um, talked about cheer and that was cool. My daughter's 21. That's great. Daughter's 21. That's, yeah, that's dope. Her, she be beating up her boyfriend because she don't kickboxing. I put her in there early so she can't get beat up by a nigga. But anyway, then my son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she's she's 5'10". Her boyfriend five foot 5'5". Five. I, I think he got a short man complex. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she be bored his ass, though. Anyway, uh, the funniest thing is, at least, at, least, at least I'm getting bail money back. She'll be all right. Yeah. But then... My son, he used to be chilling. You know, he's a cancer. He, he's he's a chill, he's on chill mode. Okay, all right. And you know, when it comes to like what I'm doing now, I got a uh, a project about to come out called Night Vision through Jubico Records. And uh, the fun part about it is they woke me back up. Okay, Jub- Jubico Entertainment woke me back up. I was I was a sleeping giant. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I really didn't, I was tripping off doing the music again. They, they they woke me back up. Okay. And they wouldn't they weren't accepting any shorts about yeah. my music. So the music came out great. That's dope. That's you know dope. I mean? You know what? Yesterday I went to go see somebody perform that I hadn't seen perform since nineteen eighty eight. And I went to go see Ice T perform. 
Oh, he can still do that. Oh, man. And, and he's 60. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm correct, hey, I believe hey. he's 64. Yeah, wait, wait. Did you forget about the fact that that nigga been on... Uh, that nigga been on Law and Order for like 12, 20 years. Like, yeah. he, and he can still rap? Yeah, he can still Well, man, let me tell you something. My son had never seen him perform. My son had ne- wasn't really too familiar with his music. And my son loved rap. But when we yeah. were right there and we saw him perform, man, he really tore shit up. And I just wanted to give Ice-T much props. This, this, this is how you go back. I am a nightmare walking, psychopath talking. talking. <laughs> <laughs> Colors. Cut, 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 colors. Yep, he did six in the morning. He did, man. Yeah, right. He tore that shit up. He tore that. As a matter right. of fact, six in the morning was actually the first song that he came out to. Well, you know, he got it easier because he ain't had to be uh, real complicated back then. He, he, right. he could just say a few words here and there, man. He was cool. You know, he, he just that's a West Coast legend. So, you know, he get on stage with a walker and still be all right. <laughs> he ain't got to say too many words. Right, right, right. <laughs> I like your sense of humor, man. <laughs> I like your sense of humor. I see. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, you know the yeah, first I mean, only beef I see had is with King T. Yeah, I don't think King T wanted that one. Huh? Oh, huh, okay. That was pretty funny. I mean, you know what? And they were both dope, bro. Well, not were they are both dope. I interviewed King T here. Maybe one day I'll get the the opportunity. Anyway, how you doing, Tila? But yeah. I still think you lost that Ice T and, and King Tila beef. So I just want to let you know that I, I think he whooped on you a little bit. Oh, I, I still love both of y'all though. Yeah, but me, all my big homies. Yeah, yeah. So, so now let me ask you this, man. Uh, um, uh, wh- where originally are you from, man? Like, where did you grow up at? Long Beach, California. The LBC. Yeah, but you know how I many people came out from Long Beach before I ever did? You got the Dove Shack, you got Domino, you got Amai, you got, like, everybody just think, the only person that put Long Beach on was Snoop Dogg. All these other people came out before Snoop Dogg. Then you got Warren, you got Nate, God rest his soul, you got Nate Dogg, rest his soul. Like it's, it's a lot of people that came before Snoop Dogg made his mark and did what he did with Dr. Dre. And Snoop Dogg left a, a legacy, left a mark on Long Beach because he didn't do it like anybody else did before he came. Right. So, I mean, there's no discredit to anything he did. Everybody thought uh, Snoop was a ladies' man. You know, that's my older cousin. He he had grown fat chicks coming to pick him up from high school when, when he was, like, 15. <laughs> He he had a flat tire. That nigga stayed getting bitches that, that was gonna pay. And that nigga Snoop was cold. He was, he was doing that from fifteen. How the fuck we got? How the fuck we get on a bus? This nigga got a, a fat bitch picking him up. She grown. <laughs> the hell? Snoop crazy. Okay, okay. You, that, now what part of Long Beach did you grow up in? On the east side of Long Beach, off, off of Logos and Twenty Street. Okay, okay. Did you go to Poly? Yes. I oh. went to Marshall, Poly, and Lafayette Elementary School. You played any sports growing up? Yeah, I was uh, in the magnet program. I mean, every sport that I played, when I got hurt, I quit. <laughs> that was some bullshit. Okay, well, like, what I was you- a pitcher at Poly. Motherfucker hot dog, when I got hit with a damn ball in my stomach. Coach, I quit. All right, so I got I caught a touchdown pass for Poly. And I, he, he hit me in the end zone. I did a backflip, landed, got a mild concussion, took my, took my, my helmet, my shoulder pads off. Coach, I quit. Just like that. Uh, and then I dunked on somebody, broke my ankle. I'm out. Coach, I quit. Damn, like that? Yeah. I thought rap was a better vision because this song had to get hurt. Right, right, right. I mean, at least we it's a fair game. We both got guns or whatever the fuck we're going to do. <laughs> okay. You know, do you not- know it's really horrible that people don't know that rap is supposed to be fun? It's supposed to be fun. That's the way it started. Right. And that's why the internet is not good for a lot of people because... They take everything too literal. Like, we're supposed to be able to joke and have fun about it. Yeah. Like, even like with Will Smith, he was joking about, which was not cool for, for Chris Rock to do, but he joked about Jay Smith about her disease. Something like, I can't wait for her to play in G.I. Jane 2. But she got a disease where she can't grow her hair. So right. he got mad and went there. But I understand it's a joke, and Will Smith is a comedian. Yeah. So he's supposed to know how to take the joke. Of course. Because he's a comedian, too. Right. And, and one of the guys that just came, he got a line, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Ray, he was like, yeah, so I, I just wrote uh, a new skit that I was going to do the next week, and I took all my Will Smith, Will Smith jokes out of it. <laughs> 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 that shit was hilarious. 
Oh, okay, like, you know what? Oh, since, since we're on that topic of Will Smith and uh, Chris Rock, do, do, do you think that was justifiable that that because it was his wife, or do you just because if you, you look at the right, I mean, because if you look at the film, well, the my footage, wife got a disease. Right, right. And I understand we're at that. an award show. Right. And we're supposed to be prestigious people. Yeah. And you're going to disrespect my wife in my face at the damn show. Mm -hmm. and, and I wasn't going to say that at first, but I turned and looked at my wife and she looked like she was about to cry. Uh -huh. Now I got to get up and do something. Okay. He wasn't going to do nothing. He laughed about it at first. See, he that's turned, what I'm talking then about. Then he turned and looked at her and she looked like she was about to cry. Yeah. That's the reason why he got up, as a man should. You don't okay. let nobody disrespect your family like that, bro. That's no, your queen. No, I, absolutely. You know what I mean? But the part that got me was that he laughed at first. See, so. <laughs> Will Smith laughed about it. He thought it was funny. But then when he did like this, he turned and look and saw that she was about to cry. She was teary eyed about it. Right. Then he got mad. He said, Man up. Man, you go up here and go take it from my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Exactly. You know, if anything, they should have just did it old school and just went outside in the parking lot. That's what hey, they should. but Chris Wright didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. Hey, he was walking up. Chris Wright like, this is not a part of the show. <laughs> but what's going on? It's not a part of the show. And so Will Smith was just hauled up. Bow! Smacked the shit out of him. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> he said, oh, wow. Wow. But Chris Wright gave the punk. He nugged his fist up at first. He said, oh, wow. He did his lip like that. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> Will Smith busted his lip. He said, oh, oh wow. Yeah, it sucked the blood out of his lips, so he looked stupid on camera. <laughs> and did you see when Dave Chappelle got jumped by that one dude on, on stage? Yeah, but you know, Dave Chappelle ain't never been able to fight. He said, I suck your dick for a dime. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't never been a fighter. He was, he was on the first Minister Society, and they got shot. <laughs> <laughs> and Minister Society, but I tried to suck a nigga dick in the alley for a dime. <laughs> they got, I can eat his cheeseburger. <laughs> That was his famous role. I suck your dick for that. Bow. All right. <laughs> That's Dave Chappelle's claim to fame. It's All right. All right. That'll work. That'll work. Now, now I have to ask you this because I know everybody's been there. Anyway, all. Dave Chappelle, we love you. You got way better since then. <laughs> At least you didn't die no more in your movies. I even forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least we're having a good I, time. I was the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Now, 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 let me ask you this, man. Uh, um, is it true? I heard this in another interview that you did that you, you come from a, a background of musicians. Your father was in a band, if I'm correct. Yeah, and he. Um, the craziest thing is, um, he was going to get signed to Motown. Okay. They wanted him, but they didn't want the band. Oh. And so he was like, well, "If you don't want me and the band, you don't want me." Motown was like, "Ah, well, we don't want you." So he told me he was like. Um, if they just want you, they don't want the band, son. Just don't make the same mistake I made. Just sign to them and then go back and get the band after you solidify the music. Right. So that was a lesson to be learned. You know what I mean? And, you know, my, my dad is a very uh, perfect part of my life. Like, you know, yeah. and, and, and God bless him. You know, he's going to look through a couple of things right now, but I'm not worried about that. God got him. I can't control that. But the thing being is, it's like, I always like being able, you only get one dad, one mom. I always like being able to talk to my parents whenever I can because it always brings me back down to earth. As yes. soon as I think I'm somebody, I'm doing something, they remind me, you ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dig, I spat you out my nutsack. I spat you out my nutsack and your mom was an incubator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 now, now you, you, so I take it your dad was the singer, the lead singer, if I'm correct? Yeah. Okay. And did, did he ever go on and uh, release anything as far as without Motown, obviously? No, he, uh, he just said, fuck it, it's uh, pimping white bitches. <laughs> okay. You know I mean? and, and, my, and dad, my dad is with a dynamite, in case they, don't nobody know. Uh -huh. My dad is with a dynamite, the pimp. Okay. And that was a crazy life. Well, well, now, what about yourself? Did you ever play any musical instruments, or did, before you started rapping, did you ever sing? Don't laugh, but don't laugh. Can you imagine my skinny ass trying to carry a cello home from oh. school in elementary school, and then I played the cello, the French horn, and the, and the piano. Okay. So, the funniest thing about the whole th the situation <laughs> is, me trying to drag that fucking cello home was not cool. Right. You hear me? Yeah. And then I, how I'm, motherfuckers talking shit to me? How am I fighting? I got a cello strapped to my back. They talking shit. Hold on, let me put my cello down. Man, you go hurry up, get your ass whooped. 
You ain't got enough time to take the cello off. Right, right. Now, do you still play any type of instrument today? Oh, yeah. I play um, I play the tulips. The tulips. Yeah. Oh, okay. That'll work. The, the ones that face this way? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and I use sign language a whole lot. That'll work. We just use sign language. We let, we let, the, we let, the, we let the tongue do the talking. <laughs> Dude, are you sure you're not coming out with your comedy album instead? <laughs> Damn. You know what? I, I, hey, I think you ought to come out with that. Start doing stand-up. Uh, I'm going to go online. And anybody want um, some sign language, just go on to therealnocturnal.com and order some sign language for 1000 a pop, and I'll be there in your city near you. <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay all right all right knock knock now now let, now let me ask you this man around what age would you say uh you started picking up the pen and paper because i've read that around 12 years old you began to write poems if i'm correct well that's how i used to get girlfriends like i, I didn't you know how when you in middle school most people be like you want to be my girl yes or no <laughs> oh that's some fucking corny shit let me figure out how to do something different so I would write a poem and fold it up and just put it on her desk. And if she came back the next day, she was like, oh, that's sweet. Oh, I'm about to fuck her. <laughs> we about to go dry up on the bitch. We ain't nothing but in middle school. Right, right. We dry up on the park bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to fuck that. I was in ninth grade. Let's just be real. Okay. Okay. That'll work. That's when we finally took the clothes off. Okay, now let me ask you. Oh, ah, what is this? Did, did, did the poems work? Yeah, they worked very well. Oh, okay. I still work right now. It's still, how about the app? I talk have... shit over a beat for a living. You're right. And my kids don't know what the ghetto is unless I take them there. They don't like their cousins. So I put my daughter in kickboxing, my son in boxing. So when they go there, they be calling my children Bougetto because they don't know what the ghetto is unless we go to the family <laughs> and y'all Bougetto ass niggas. Whatever what y'all want to do about it. <laughs> they be like, Dad, we don't even like going to the family. They be tripping. Uh, yeah, they grew up. They grew up in the ghetto. Y'all didn't have to see that, but I thank God for the gift that He gave me. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't do nothing special. People be trying to be like, "Oh, how did you make it?" I don't fucking know how I made it. I was in the hood. I was a ghetto like everybody else. God just gave me a gift, and I focused on it. Right. That's that's all I did. I, I didn't do anything special. I just got blessed. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, if anybody want to rap or do something else. Uh, I think you might want to go to college instead, cause this is some bullshit. Okay. Right. <laughs> now, now well, me, unless you make it, then it's fun. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now let me ask you that, Brown. What age, if you can remember, you did your first demo where you recorded yourself, you played it back, and you heard yourself? Do you remember around what age you were? Sixteen. About sixteen. And was this at a regular studio, a home studio? Uh did you record yourself on the radio? Yeah, it was it was in my you know, my is from Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And uh he had a studio in his garage. Okay. And it was a, produced by the name of Kip, K I P and he produced for Aretha Franklin and all kind of people. Uh sit, sit there, and he brought me over there. Okay. And and I was like, okay, I got you want to do that beat? Go ahead. I'll record you. And my is the person that recorded my first song ever recorded. Okay. You know he got a church down, right? Well, I'm sorry, what was He's that? A preacher, he got a church. Oh, for real? I might. Up there like. Oh shit. Am I got a church. He he didn't went mace on a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't went to West Coast Mace. What is he? What is he? A Baptist, Pentecostal, Apostolic? What is he, man? Non-denominational. Oh, of course, that's the new thing right now. Yeah, it's just me, nigga. <laughs> and, I, and I'm preaching. <laughs> Don't call me nothing except for the nigga already talking shit to y'all. <laughs> and uh, uh, the offer plate coming. Uh, Twice. So uh, we need something for the church. The lights uh, need to be paid, and uh, we need to park a lot. And he needs a Rolls Royce. And, and I think I need a bill on this Bentley I got. <laughs> Have you ever heard him preach? Oh, he's he's, he's actually he's actually he's absolutely real with, with what it says. Okay. And but people don't understand his name is Ahmad. And he says non denominational because really he's a Muslim. Okay. Oh, okay. And he got these people over there thinking they're Baptists. And you got a Muslim preacher. True story? Yes indeed. 
Okay, all right. Have you visited? Yeah, I went there. Okay. He, he just say, he, he don't he don't say what Jesus said. He just read the Bible, say what God says, leave it like that, which is very educational. But that's why he said he's not denominational. Right, right. He has his own uh, spiritual beliefs. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. He has, he, has a, he has a nice church. That'll work, man. That'll work. Hey. Have you ever heard a preacher that stutters? A preacher that yeah. stutters? Yes. No. I know a pastor that my mom used to go to the church. His name was Pastor Wood. God rest his soul. He'd be like, nah, I, 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 I want to tell you, the, 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 the Lord said, well, hold on. How do we got a pastor that stutters? So now we're going to be here Instead of an hour and a half sermon It's two hours Right, right Because he can't get all his words out right Right You can't so, put your so, man either So you know So you know all the children that like, I'm going to go to the bathroom again Because this <laughs> <laughs> And you can't punch your man either After every bar <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't edit it. You can't edit it and do and do a, and do a cutaway. Right, right. You know what I mean? Okay. So you recorded your first demo there with him. Now you played it back. What, what were your thoughts, man, of you hearing yourself play, being played back on that beat? I actually like the way that I sound. Like you know how some people don't like the way they sound on the mic. Right. Like, I was like, dang, that's kind of that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. I mean, but Ahmad saw it, and then Mark Spar saw it. After that, but um, I saw it before anyone. And, you know, he, like I said, he's from Long Beach, but he heard me rapping freestyle. He was like, hey, you know, that's what, you know, we did back in the day when I'm a young and I can't anymore. I right. Like, Dang. I never knew I would be on something that prestigious. But the thing being is, I never knew I even had to tell it. Right. I was on the block freestyle and chilling. Mm. But it just came naturally to you. Well, that was the way that, uh, how can I said it? Uh, we'd be waiting, waiting for who turn it was on the block till past time. Right. <laughs> 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 That's the best way I can say it. <laughs> so it was, we had nothing else to do. Right. You know what I mean? Okay, so now what what comes next after that? Did you guys shop it? Did you guys just continue to work more demos? I mean, did you think did you take it serious, or were you just at that time just fucking around? What happened when I when I got out of the penitentiary? What happened was uh, I linked up with Mark Sparks. Then he put out Sunshine. He put out Anthony Hamilton. He put out a few different people. He used to produce for the Dappy Roots, and I didn't fit into his program because you know he, he mostly does neo soul. Right. So he was like, now I got somebody I'm going to take you to. And he, and he took me to Dre. Okay. okay. That's how I met Dr. Dre, through Mark Sparks. Okay. You know and and so, what year did you meet Dre? And about how uh, old I were you? I got out in 98. I met him in January 99. Okay. I got out November 98. Okay. I had to pay attention. Met him January ninety nine. Now, now, do you mind if I ask you uh, uh, how long your stretch was in, in the pen? And, and what Four years, eight months, 16 days, and 12 hours. And what did you go in for? Robbing motherfuckers with my damn crazy ass wife. <laughs> he said robbing motherfuckers with my crazy ass wife. And she was dressed like a boy. It was like the body and Clyde thing. Was, what you doing, dude? She dressed like a boy, put on a hat like she was a boy, just tucked the hair. And that didn't work out too well. Okay. okay. I mean, we won 22 times. It was good. The 23rd time got his boat. Caught up. Okay. All right. So so now, now let me ask you this. When you were in there, might be a silly question, might not. Were you writing at all when you were in there? Oh, yeah. I was with a guy named Convict, uh, uh, Battle Rabbit. I was in there with um, Big Rab. I was in there with Crybaby for 20. They call it Vincent now because he's out now. But, like, you know, like, you know, we used to do all that. I mean, we beat on tables and rap. You know right. How go. But, I mean, we didn't have shit else to do. X another day off. Okay. Now, now, now let me ask you this question because I'm sure fans would like to know. Me growing up, uh, of course, some of my early inspirations, uh, I was just a DJ and then it became a producer. Mm -hmm. uh, my inspirations obviously were guys like uh, Ice T, Toddy T, Mix Master Spade. Uh, uh, and then you, you got guys from uh, New York, obviously the Fat Boys run DMC, yeah. you know, uh, uh, Houdini, Grandmaster Flash, and, and all those people. Yeah. Um, 
who were your uh, early in rap inspirations growing up? Like, who, who did you use to bump? I used to like EPMD. Okay. I liked um, Ice Cube, of course. Because it was funny when he just, and, and then I like, I like to just watch Eat. Uh, Easy E and Ice Cube go back and forth talk shit to each other. So Easy, you know what I mean. But like the funniest thing was, to me the the funniest rapper was from leaders leaders of the new school. Okay, Buster Rhymes. Buster Rhymes. Yeah, he just said the most ridiculous shit ever. Yeah, like you had to listen, you had to rewind it and listen to what he said because he be saying some dumb shit, <laughs> but it's metaphoric. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, I mean, it was it was and it was a great pleasure for. Me to even go to New York and meet all these people and all that stuff and, you know, go to these different functions and for them not to consider me a gangster rapper, for them to call me an MC. Right. Like, that was a blessing. Like, they didn't call me a, a gangster rapper. Like, you know what I mean? That was, I was like, whoa, okay, this might really be real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and now let me ask you this. So you go and you meet Dre. Um, what was your first impression of him? When you first met him, was was this in the studio? Did he play music for you? Did you guys have lunch or what, what no, was that like? I was in the studio at um, Larrabee. Okay. In Hollywood, and um, I was sitting there with my wife, and like I'm sitting there, like I'm trying to tell her, like, what should I rap? I'm like trying to rap different things, you know, different stuff. And so then I saw Dre walk by. I was like, oh shit! Is that Dre? He did, did he just walk by? I'm thinking he's going to the bathroom because I'm upstairs at Larry B. We know where the arcades and shit are. Yes. Upstairs. Ain't no bathroom over there. He's on the other side of the wall listening to me talk to my wife, rap, trying to figure out what I'm going to rap. Then he walked by there and he was like, Larry! And Mike Lynn. Mike Lynn and Larry came and got him. Dre want to talk to you. And so I go back down there. He got like four or five people. He's like, well, I need to sign somebody today. Hmm. So let's see who's going to be. So anyway, it was me and about four of the people there. And um, every time he changed the beat, I, I changed my style up, which was cool. Because he was like, how many people there? I was like, I don't know. But he said, let's keep finding out. He changed the beat again. But anyway, and then when I got out of the vocal booth, he was like, well, uh, I want you to be signed up after my can, can you sign how we going to work this out? I was like, bro. How many people you got signed after that? He was like 250. I was like, I don't want to be 251. Do I look like shelf art to you? You got me fucked up. Let me write for you. Let me do something else. I don't want to be on the shelf. You know, it, it, now let me ask you. Maybe you can answer this. You said he had 250 artists signed to Aftermath. And ask me how many came out. How many came out? None. <laughs> so, 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 like, so, so let me ask you. If you can answer for him, and I know you can't. Oh, True First came out. And she got sued. Oh, wow. But she said, yeah, yeah, Rike, so, so, so. Because that was an Indian song, and it's a religious song. She wasn't supposed to put that one out. Yeah. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this. Why do you think he was signing people and just shelving them? Do you think those were just, uh, uh, if you will, tax write-offs? It's an industry, it's an industry tactic. You can corner the market if you want to make, make sure don't, don't let it get in your way. You buy up. Anybody that could be in your way and put them on your shelf. Wow. So when you release your stuff, they're not in your way the way your shit can sign. It's a tactic. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, even a lot of independent labels right now that are doing that to a yeah. lot of people. They offer them, you know. They sign them just to shelve them. And yeah. people don't even understand that. I'm going to sign you so you get out of the other artists that I really believe in and get out of his way. Yeah. So you're not in his way because you're from his city. So I'm going to get you out of his way so I can put him out. See, but you would think, okay, and, and this is just me just thinking that you would think like, okay, look it, if I'm the label owner, if I own Aftermath and I sign all these people and all these people can make me millions, why not? But what, he just wanted to stay being the head honcho? Uh, well, what I found about rap, nobody wants to be number two. Okay. But you found no, that, I mean, that, yeah. But you found that about rap. Nobody yeah. be want, wants to be number two. Not at all. So I mean, you you can't really be mad. At, excuse me. At everybody want to be number one. Okay. Because out of the top two hundred on the Billboard charts, 
I was mad because I made it to number two. I was mad I didn't make it to number one. I didn't want to be number two. Mm. Uh, damn, I can't get the number one spot at a top 200 albums in the world. I wanted to be number one. I only made it to number two. That was some bitch ass bullshit, but I forgot I was rolling 20, so it don't matter. <laughs> 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 Don't do this, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. So he said, I want to sign you, and you didn't sign with him, obviously, because you didn't want to be, you know, uh, 251. So what was your next move from there? Did you uh, continue to work with them as far as just... No, I just kept, I just kept writing for him, and, and, you know, like I tell a lot of people a lot of times in different interviews and stuff, nobody thought it was weird that... Dr. Dre Stoop Dog made a movie called The Wash. And the first single for that was me and Dr. Dre called Bad Intentions. Like Bad Intentions, yep. That was the first single for the video. Um, and for the movie. Like, and it was at the end of the movie. He he created some shit to get me out of the background to put me in the limelight. I didn't want to be in the limelight. I was just in the background writing for three years in the background, just writing. I didn't care about being in the limelight. Mm. He made me do that. He was like, nah, nah. That's what he said. Nah, nah. I'm like, what? He's like, we need to do a video for that bad attention. Oh, fuck. You want to do a video? He was like, yeah, how you want to do it? I was going to say something too. I said, I said, let's do a video on it. What is the video on it? Let's just go to a whole brothel. He like, sound like a good idea. Then he came back, he had a whole video written. I hmm. said, this motherfucker's not playing. <laughs> he was like, yeah, okay, we shoot that on Saturday. And it was Friday evening. I need you to be there at like nine o'clock. This nigga's not playing. <laughs> so now I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? He wasn't playing with me though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and take a 10 minute break. We're gonna come right back and we're gonna continue right where we left off. I have some other questions. I wanna talk about Bad Intentions and the other song. Okay, that wait, you... can I say something before I go? Yes, yes, sir. All right, so when I was doing the Watch soundtrack, it was a powder blue Ferrari pulled up. He was like, nah, nah, he threw me the keys, Dre. This is why I say people that don't like Dre just because Dre ain't fucking with him because they don't like that. He don't like their music. So he threw me the keys like, nah, nah, go to the beach house, finish making the watch soundtrack. And I wrecked the motherfucker totaled it before I even made it. I was playing pinball because, you know, the, the gear shifts are up here. Yeah. So I played pinball, beep, 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 and flipped over. I crawled out of it on Malibu Boulevard trying to go to the beach house. I had to call. I said, Dre, uh, I need you to do me a favor, bro. Um, he's like, what, not? I was like, uh... Can you send me a limo to come bring me to the studio and show me over? He was like, that's cool. What happened to the Ferrari? Uh, well, I didn't want to tell you, bro, but I, I wrote your Ferrari. He said, you, he started busting up laughing. He said, you stupid fuck. That wasn't my Ferrari. And he hung the phone up and sent the limo. <laughs> All right, commercial break. All right, commercial break. Okay, everybody, once again, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, let them know that Nocturnal is in the motherfucking building. We'll be back yes, in 10 minutes. Indeed. Hey, what it do? It's your boy Cap G. Subscribe to Rodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, sir. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is King T chilling on Rodium Radio. Tune in, subscribe every Sunday and Wednesday. Fucking with my man Tony A. The Wizard. West up, this Lazy Dub, and you're tuned in to Rodium Radio right here with Tony A. The Wizard on every Sunday and Wednesday, 7 p.m. Make sure you like and subscribe that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm right here at Local Negro, Tony A, Rodium Radio. Tune in. Yo, yo, what's up? It's your boy MTO right here with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. Make sure you like and subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, everybody? It's your homegirl, Lovely, and I'm right here at Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and check them out every Sunday and Wednesday. It's Nina Beretta with Rhodium Radio and Tony A. The Wizard. Tune in Sundays and Wednesdays. Like and subscribe. What's up, everybody? This is the Master chilling with El Triste. Follow and subscribe to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard.
Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Rashidi Harper, director, executive producer from Hip Hop Uncovered. And I'm here at the Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Stay tuned. Coming at you live through the harbor area, you got MC Poncho, the number one Sancho. And you are checking out Rhodium Radio with my man, Tony A. The Wizard. Check it out. What's up? This is Ronan Gray. You're watching Rhodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. What up? This is Mr. D over at Rhodium Radio with my homeboy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, y'all? This Uncle Spliff, man, from Spliff TV. Y'all need to tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rhodium Radio with my homie, Tony A. The Wizard. Yo, you're tapped in with the Steel City Hustlers. This is Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A. The Wizard. Motherfucking land. Make sure you fucking like, subscribe, share, and watch. Yo, it's your boy Troublesome Man, TM Gang Live Full Effect. Here at Rodeo on Radio with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. You know what it is. Wow. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Ernie G in the place to be. I'm chilling here at Rodeo Radio with my homeboy Tony A, the motherfucking Wizard. Watch those locals forever. Yo, what's up? Ben and your boy Young Hype here at Rodeo Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in every Sunday and Wednesday. What's up, Anthony Campos, a.k.a. Big Citra, inviting everybody to tune in and subscribe to Tony Vision, Rodeo Radio, with your host, Tony the Wizard. What's happening? It's your boy Bobby Castro, and I'm here at Rodeo Radio with the homie Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the shit. What's good, y'all? Eric Bobo from the mighty Cypress Hill, chilling right here on Rodeo Radio with the homeboy Tony A. the Wizard. That's right. Hey everybody, this is Cliff Ritchie, and I'm here on Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. What's cracking? It's the homie Crazy Boy, Blue Rain Music. You tuned in to Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A, the Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday, right here. What's up, everybody? This is Dali C, the Trap Queen, and you guys are listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Make sure you guys tune in. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Bobby B, and you're live with Tony A, the Wizard on Rodium Radio. 1212, coming to you live from the Harbor area. DJ Ralph M, rocking beats with my man, Tony A, rocking the SB1200. Let's go. Yo, what's up? This is DJ Yeller coming straight out of Compton, Rhodium Radio, with my boy Tony A, the Wizard. Check him out. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Miss Got this from NYC. And I'm here with Tony A, the Wizard at Rhodium Radio. You already know how to bring the NYC love. Hey, shout out to all of you guys. Hey, what's cracking? It's that guilty one. You're tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard, live every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe. <sighs> What's going on? It's Hazard. You are tuned in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Make sure you tune in every Sunday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Yo, yo, this is your boy Invincible, and you are watching the Rhodium Radio show with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure you're tuned in and watching. Ooh, ah. What's up, guys? This is Isabella Soul, and you're tuning in with Tony A, the Wizard, on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. What's up, guys? It's your girl, J-Rocks. I'm here on Rhodium Radio with your host, Tony A, the Wizard. I'll make sure to tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yo, what's up? This is Jose Homicide. You hanging out at Rhodium Radio, hosted by Tony A, the Wizard. Like and subscribe.
All right, what up? It's your boy King Cash right here at Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up? It's your boy Trouble P here at Rodium Radio with your boy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. West Coast. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? It's your boy, Big Havoc. One Hood Admiral. South Central Cartel General. And you're tuned in to Rodium Radio with my boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Stay locked in. Hello, everybody. This is Rocky Fadia. And you're listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up? What's up, my people? Hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. Shout out to Tony A, the Wizard, and shout out Rodium Radio. Much love. Thank you for having me. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks, and right now you're listening to the OG, Tony A, the Wizard, on Rodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked, subscribe, comment, hate. It don't matter, man. We're getting to it. It'll five stand up. Hey, what up? It's your boy, Mark Cruz. You're now tuned in to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard, the legend. Tap in. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Queenie. You're tuned in to Rodium Radio. Check my man, Tony A, the wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what it is. What's up, Pippin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas, at Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Gia! Hey, y'all. This is Elvia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio with motherfucking Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share. Can I get a moment of your time? Hey, it's your boy Lucky Sun Zhu from Hoodstock's podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game. Tony A, The Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it. Don't sleep on it. Hey, H.A., stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, The Wizard. If not, you a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy Young Thrive right here with the homie Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm on the Rhodium Radio. <laughs> what up? It's ODM from Lighter Shade of Brown. You know your daddy's favorite rapper, your mama's favorite DJ, <laughs> plus that YouTube star. You know what I mean? RBG fam. Lighter Shade all day with the homie Tony A. Right here, Rhodium Radio, Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's go. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 263. And uh, once again, let me give a quick shout-out to our sponsor. Once again, Nacho Granny's Cookies. Uh, she will be on the description, so you can click on the link, and it'll take us directly to her page. These are medicated, and these are uh, regular chocolate chip cookies. So once again, get at her. These cookies are the bomb. So once again, she's from the neighborhood. Make sure you guys support if you guys want regular or you guys want medicated. So here we go. Not your granny's cookies. Once again, it'll be on the description once you once with this uh, this video is posted up. So without further ado, once again, Nocturnal, we're in the building. What's good, what? Noc? What? Oh yeah. How you doing? Well, my bad. I fell asleep under the chair. That's what they said I was gonna do anyway. <laughs> they said during the break I was gonna fall asleep. Oh, you took a little ten minute nap. Yeah. That'll work. Power, power no. tap. Tap tap tap. That'll work, man. Okay. Can you so, say whatever the hell they want to say online? I bet you my dick is better than yours. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Let me let, let, let me fuck your bitch. I'm gonna say your hoe wants to be with me, and she ain't playing. <laughs> You're just saying. Yeah, but they knock that shit off. <laughs> all y'all hoes is groupies. All your all y'all bitches is groupies. All y'all bitches is groupies. Look, I went around the world once. I fuck every bitch twice. And me and my hoes, we go together like jambalaya and rice. <laughs> you just saying. Okay, now, 
uh, he a limo comes back to pick you up because you wrecked a Ferrari. Did, 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 was that recoupable, man? Did they take it out of your paycheck? No. So he got it like that. No, he's he was my present for my birthday, and I fucked it up. Oh shit! That's that's what he did. He, it was a present. Yeah, he was trying to bless it because I was doing a lot of work. Dre is a cool cat. That's why I don't understand when people. Fuck Dre. Uh, no, if Dre not if Dre not fucking with you, that's because he don't like your music. If he fuck with you, then he gonna make sure he gets it right because he's a perfectionist. Yeah. And like so, when fuck Dre. Oh, well, that means Dre ain't fucking with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Now let, me, now let me ask you this. Um, what, what I hear that a lot, and and I often tell people this: the Dre that I knew was the Dre from the '80s. Right. I don't know the Dre from today. Okay. Right. But now, I hear that a lot. Dre stole my music. Dre stole my beats. Dre this. Dre that. And Dre, fuck Dre. Why do you think they say that shit, bro? Like, why do you, is it just because he just don't want to fuck with them? We got to understand. Even, even my, even Dre said in the beat that I made with Bad Intentions, he said, Manhagany, dropping the instrumental. Dre take your beat and make it 10 times better and make a hit out of it. I, I believe that. And so, I mean... If you sign the paperwork and don't read it, you don't like the stipulations, that's your fault. Right. Fuck Dre. Well, Dre made it a hit. Made it a hit. And you signed the paperwork, and you did the work for hire, and you accepted 15 racks, that's on you. Right. It's not my, my it's not Dre's fault or anybody else's fault that you didn't want to get your publishing. You accepted the work for hire because you wanted 15 or 10 racks. Yeah. I mean... What you sign is your name. Fuck Dre. You fucked me over. No, you signed your name and fucked yourself. Mm. You didn't have to sign that paperwork. Right, right. You could have looked at it, took it to your lawyer, and renegotiated and got your uh, got your just dues. But if you go sign that shit that Dre give you, that's on you. And now, now it's fuck Dre. Right. But you wanted that 10, 15, 20 racks real quick. <laughs> you was happy then until it ran out. Right. Bitch ass nigga. <laughs> Okay, uh, now let me ask you this. The, uh, uh, dumb question, but I'm sure you watched it, but I have to ask. The the Super Bowl halftime show, mm-hmm. what did you think about it? It looked like the Way I Am video. Okay. You ever seen the Way I Am video? Yes. Okay, we're going to cut to this in a minute. <laughs> and we're going to look at the Way I Am video. They did that video just like I did the Way I Am video. Okay. With the four scenes in the four rooms and the third scene. They copied me. They copied my style. Motherfuckers been copying my style for years. So is it fuck Dre? Exhibit. <laughs> all these motherfuckers. Oh, for real? I've been writing for Dre for years. I've been writing for Warren G. Writing for fuck all these motherfuckers for years. Right. I don't give a fuck. I got a new style. And my new album is going to be called Night Vision. Because I can see through these motherfuckers. <laughs> all these motherfuckers is <laughs> chumps. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. But it's it's going to be spelled with a capital K. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, but now, no, but I love all the homies. Believe they made me better. Like I'm stubborn. I'm a stubborn dude, but they taught me a lot about this business, bro. Yeah. Don't don't, don't yeah. get me twisted. Like I talk shit a lot. I talk a lot of, of shit. Of course. But, but they made me into the person I am here today. That actually people say he might be a living legend. I, last time I checked, I was like, I, I become an icon or a legend later. I don't know. Yeah, but I think I've been here for a couple of decades, so we'll figure it out. Yeah, and okay. anybody popped me in the face here, so I should I should be good. Yeah, now the reason why I asked you about the the halftime show is because recently, uh, somebody that was signed to Dre uh, was going on podcast doing interviews saying that he got dogged that Dre didn't put him in the halftime show, and that was a game. I wouldn't put game in there either. Okay. Isn't it claim to be from Long Beach? Isn't he really from Palmdale? <laughs> no, no, but I saw, I saw him asking. Uh, so you said you wouldn't have put him in there? He the only nigga I know got dropped from Aftermath twice. Twice? <laughs> okay. Dre signed him twice. Signed him, 50 Cent saved him. With the hooks. In his first album. That's why 50 Cent said, I'm laughing straight to the bank with this. Then he was trying to come out with an album called The, the, the Red Line. Dre signed again. He started talking shit about me, called me a faggot. Dre dropped him again. 
Oh, Talking shit. the wrong shit about the wrong nigga. Yeah, okay. So game got good good verses. Uh huh. He can't make a hook to save his life. Oh, okay. So is that what it was? Uh, when you said Fifty Cent said, "I'm laughing straight to the bank with this." Ha 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 ha. I had heard you say on a podcast where you had called in and you had said that he was about to get dropped from Aftermath. And 50 Cent he, saved him. Yes. Yeah, so now, when you said it saved him, so 50 Cent went in there and actually wrote and the did hook. all of his hooks to make it, make it come out. 50 Cent signed him. Hmm. Okay. 50 Cent, well, okay, mind you, 50 Cent was signed to Eminem. Okay. And 50 Cent signed the game. Okay, okay. And was laughing straight to the bank with that. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did you ever even have a, a like a confrontational uh, discussion with uh, the game? Ah, uh, anyway, I kept trying to call him. I talked to his brother. <sighs> his brother really is from Compton, even though the game's from Palmdale. But um, his brother, like, man, don't trip, man. It's gonna be all right. Okay. So then the game went on. Um, I said, man, I'm just trying to be a, you know, I'm a dad, I'm a single father, I'm just trying to, you know, keep everything peaceful. I don't want no more beef. And you ever notice that everybody that the game had beef with is still alive? Why would I, why would I be scared of that? Everybody that the game ever had beef with is still breathing. If I got beef with you, you might not be sucking God's air. <laughs> then they had beef with like 100 people. They st everybody's still alive. Right, right. Okay, so so Dre signed up for the first album, and then were they uh, shooting blanks? What was that? What was the game shooting blanks? <laughs> okay, so so Dre signed up for the first album, and then uh, he signed up for another album. He got dropped, and he, he got signed again. So is that what you were saying? No, I'm saying tell Game to let me go with him to Big Five to help him buy his bullets because he ain't shooting right. He's shooting blanks. They, they, they sell him duds because everybody he had beef with is still alive. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Right. How you gonna have beef with all these niggas in rap and everybody's still alive? Obviously, you really ain't got no beef like that. Right. So well, you build your whole career off of talking shit about people and building beef and you really ain't gonna do shit because you're a chump. And you grew up in Palmdale talking about you from Compton. Hmm. This is be real. Game. Okay. Okay, I didn't Your know grandmother that. live in Com and Palmdale. The other people live in Compton. We ain't going to talk about 100, the real 100. We ain't talking about whack-ass 100. We talking about the real 100. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. That'll work, man. Hey, I, this is going <laughs> better than what I expected. So, yeah. now, now, now let me ask you this. Now, as far as... Um, Game, I, I've only known, I think, two people that he's had, no, three people that he's had beef with. Obviously, you, 50, and I believe it was Meek Mills. Uh, uh, who else did he have gay, uh, um, beef with that you know of? His baby mama that had to change your heart. Oh, okay. Uh, the niggas he used to strip for with a G-string on that he worked at the Blue Oyster for. <laughs> the Blue um, Oyster. <laughs> 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 Hey, hey, hey. Shit, my list goes on and on. Okay, okay. All right, let's change, let's change the channel. All right. So now, wait a minute. Yes, sir. How you going to show? <laughs> Where's your baby mama? At? And she meet an African nigga from Nigeria. She got some Nigerian dick and had to change her heart. Yeah, you're right. She she had to change her heart. Well, obviously she like dark skin. She don't like she don't like bright skin niggas. She she had to change her heart. She says she wants dark beat. Oh, okay. All right. Now, since, since all this jumped off, has he ever reached out to you and like, yo, man, let's talk. Let's meet for lunch or something. There's no need for that. Okay. He know that I don't have a problem with him. He don't have a problem with me. We just was talking shit because in the industry, it's just beef. End of the game, if you want to make a diss song, put it out, and I guarantee you I'll rip you a new asshole with my diss song. So, hurry up and get your ass whooped. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, if he's listening right now, is there anything you want to tell him? So, I'll fuck your mama. 
And she gonna like it Alright well And I know where she live at <laughs> On 17th Street in Compton Okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your first single that comes out is from the wall. I not the car waves off that bitch. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, again, my lady, so you know I'm, I'm. We both from South Beach. It's all good. You go talk shit. Go talk your shit. Let's make a song. I bet you my song will be better than yours. But guarantee one thing is you can't out rap me. You never could. You all. You never will be able to. I was there before you, and I'm still here, nigga. I thought you was going to end my career. What happened? Now I'm online, you bitch ass nigga. So what you do is you try to end my career by making it this song. I'm going to show you how I'm going to wreck you and fuck you off. <laughs> okay, so so Bad Intentions drops. And then you had another song on that same album, on the Wash album, uh, Straight West Coast. Wait a minute, did Drake fucking been asked? Because I think they made a song together in Compton. Wait, who? Did Drake fucking been asked? I think they made a song together in Compton. Oh, I don't know. I never heard of that one. Uh, Drake? Was, uh, was, uh, I, think Craig, I think Drake grabbed his booty in the video. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I don't know. Does anybody have a video? Anyway, I love everybody. My manager said me to stop it. <laughs> Even though I'm just clowning and having fun. We're just having fun. So when is the, uh, so when is the, um, the Nocturnal Comedy album drop? Uh, as soon as I go to the comedy store, I get on open mic night. <laughs> I don't even got to rap no more. I just get on stage and just talk shit. Yeah, I bet, I bet you I bet you back in the day, you were probably the king of the bag in the fucking, uh, in, in the street, huh? You used oh, to yeah, people didn't want to talk no shit to me. They'd just be like, oh, hey, this man, here this nigga. <laughs> okay. like, I got jokes. Because, you know, I've always been the half breed, the zebra nigga, the, the ostrich looking nigga, the pterodactyl cuz looking nigga. The pterodactyl. <laughs> <coughs> Nocturnal Park Right Okay So you know I, I look like the pluck bird So they call me Young D-O-V-E Instead of you D-U-B okay. Young dove yeah. Look like a pluck pigeon Like a <laughs> Like a baby pigeon With no feathers on it yet Okay yeah, It's whatever I, I have fun in my life man. I'm, I'm, I'm actually Happy that I've had all the experiences That I that I've actually had in my life because truthfully, it makes me into the person that I really am today. That'll work. That'll work. So now, uh, once again, you had two songs on the, the Wash album for the soundtrack. It was, once again, Bad Intentions and Straight West Coast. Now, when that Bad Intentions came out, that was the first time the world has, have, has heard of Nocturnal. Uh, uh, obviously, you started uh, doing shows. You started you know, performing, started doing meeting greets or whatnot. What was the response that you were getting from the fans? Uh, you know the craziest thing is like I didn't realize what was gonna be so pertinent in my career <sighs> cause you know a lot of people say Crips and Bloods in their rap but with the way I am album you know I had Knox Landon then I had the, the White soundtrack that I, I had a pertinent part in and then I released The Way I Am with yeah. me and Snoop I didn't realize it was gonna be pertinent when I said in the album, I said Crips, Bloods, Essays, and Vadios, Hood Rats and Ratchets, Drive for the West Coast. And I went to Tower Records in Hollywood. And, you know, first of all, niggas bootleg records. Yeah. Bitches buy records, what you saying? Essays buy records, but I got this show. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Uh, look, fool. <laughs> yeah, I got the shows. And they, they'll buy two of them. Sign this, fool. Yep. I be looking at you stupid. Hey, successful. I got another one. I'm playing it right now. I got another one. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. I'm telling you the real. They'll buy two and come to your show so you can sign for them. Yeah. And they'll put it in the frame and put it on their wall in their house. That's right. That's some real shit. Yeah, we bump one and we save one. Right. They ain't just buy one. They're going to buy two of them. Two of them, yeah. They ain't going to show up and look at you stupid if you don't sign it. <laughs> 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 it's a problem if you don't sign it. You better, you better, you got the Sharpie here, me? <laughs> yeah, fool right here. <laughs> you know what? One thing I will say, man, hmm. and I'm sure you know this already because you've been around in a long time, but Rasa really, really loves your music, bro. Uh, you know, I went to Camacho's 
when Kool Aid was a part of Power 106, uh -huh. before she moved somewhere else, and it was like 4,000 essays in there, and they had 13 on the back of their head, all kind of tattoos in their face, everything. I'm, I'm sitting, I'm looking, I'm looking through the curtain, I'm like, Kool Aid, and just, what's going on? She's like, You stupid ass, you don't know? The reason why you sold out the first weekend in LA is because of the essays. Now do the damn show. <laughs> I felt like a dumbass. <laughs> what was the response that you got when you went up on stage? Susan said, who they said, and what, who they said welcome to the stage. And I told her, she started whispering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, it scared me. I walked on stage. I walked on stage. I got scared while I went off. <laughs> After I had to stand there for a minute. That's a guy, me. <laughs> Okay. It's like a bad essay dream, like I'm about to die immediately. <laughs> it's about 3,000 bald head people here. <laughs> so I had to turn around and be like, how y'all fucking do tonight? They start waiting, like, you know the essay was, right? I'm like, hey, uh, we trying to have fun tonight or what? They start talking shit, so I just jumped off the stage, so I walked through the crowd doing my song. That'll work. And they kept trying to hand me the weed. They kept trying to fucking give me a drink. They tried <laughs> to give me their drink. And they just sipped off. Right, 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 right. You hear me? Right. Like, you hear me? Like, I was like, damn. I actually made a difference with the black and brown pride. I'm, I'm bringing togetherness together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of creating division. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, let me stay on that page. Yeah. Because the only person we really got to watch out for is... Uh, them cockers, mountain motherfuckers. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that divide and conquer. Yeah. They want us to not be together because they know how powerful we really could be. Absolutely. Together. Absolutely. I'm just being real. You you are being real. No, that's very, very true, man. You know, I guess there's some things better left unsaid, but I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. Say what you want to say. Last time man. I checked, my name is Bubba Lee Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> You are now listening to Bubbly Tobias News. Yeah. You know what? Let, let, let me pick up on something you said earlier. You had said that you always wanted to be behind the scenes. You didn't want to be in front of the camera or, or yeah, in, in the spotlight. Now, that's what I was going to say. Did you? How long did it take for you to get used to that? Because obviously you had I'm hit. I'm still not used to it. Okay. Like it's still a challenge every time I do. Because like you always aim to try to please. You, know, you, don't, you don't care if it's thirty or 30,000. Y'all, even if it's just 30 people there at your show, or 30,000, you want the people that came at least to enjoy what you did. Yeah. So, it's always a, a, a level of, fuck. Like, hopefully I'll do my job. God help me. I'm sure that they like the show. Like, you don't know what you're going to expect till you get on the show. If they don't like the show, you got to look at the Hey, stop that. You got to put your fist up. Stop that. Make them go to a different song than that Bobby and Eddie song. Like, so you got to have a good DJ with you that know what he's doing. Like, yeah, definitely. It's not easy. Because if they're not feeling the song, you better go to the next song immediately. Yeah. Or uh, motherfuckers start walking to the bathroom, go to the bar, get some drinks, and you have a few hundred people there who listen to your show, and next thing you know, it's like eight people there, you start hearing crickets. Like, <laughs> you start hearing cricket, 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 uh, where everybody go? <laughs> now, you, now, let me ask you this, because this happened to me I've been teaching for a long time, and right. I've done a lot of a lot of tours, a lot of shows. Only one time I can say that I got really fucking drunk, that I I was fucked up on stage. Mm -hmm. Has that ever happened to you, man, where you was just too fucked up to go perform, but yeah, you still went ahead and did it? Yeah, I, um, so I'm not what I said. And my, my younger brother was there with me. I was so lit one time that... I was on stage at the edge. I passed out on stage. Motherfuckers caught me and threw me back on stage. <laughs> and I hit the back of my head on the pipe on stage. When they threw me back on stage, they woke me up. And I said, and y'all walks to bed with me? <laughs> <laughs> and she ain't playing. <laughs> <laughs> it woke you up? I picked right up where I left over it. Yo, that, that, hey, at least you finished the song. She creeps with me and sleeps. Am I doing the right song? <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 let me ask you about that song because that's got to be one of the fucking dopest choruses or fucking verses, bro. It's the way you said it. You know, now, now let me ask you this. Was that hard to come up with or was that easy for you? 
Well, first of all, I got sinus problems. So when I did it, I didn't think Dre to keep. It. I didn't think Dre was gonna keep it. Okay. I was like, I ran out. That was me with sinus problems. Now I gotta figure out how to mimic that voice when I'm on stage. <laughs> Every single time I do it. No shit. I I was having sinus issues. It was it was coming from spring to the fall, and the leaves was falling off the trees, and the shit was bad because. My nose was clogged up. Mm. And so my, I was like, I couldn't even do this shit. Like, I could be like, all I really know is your whole wants to. It wouldn't have been the same. All I could do be like, I right now is your whole wants to be with me. Your shit ain't playing. They like, yeah, we keeping that. <laughs> now, this nigga Dre is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gonna keep that, Dre? Oh, so, yeah, finish it. What I'm saying, she creeps with me and sleeps between the yeah, we got ooh. Yeah, okay, hi. How that shit morning? Like be here too. <laughs> I'm like, this is Dick really gonna keep that shit. Now now let me ask you this. Being in the vocal the vocal booth with him, I, I seen him do a lot of stuff with Easy mm-hmm. and Cube and those guys back in the eighties uh, when they were doing their first album right here at Audio Treatments in the city of Torrance. Mm-hmm. One thing I I do know from seeing him that he would make him do their verses over and over and over and over. Oh, he had me, he had me, he had me repeat this one bar for like an hour and a half. What, was he just try, trying to get like your the voice he, to come he out? He heard something that he wanted me to say and how he wanted it to sound. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck is this dude doing right now? Why am I here trying to spit one bar? Mm-hmm. But when he finally got it, he put an effect on it, and the rest of the verse went smooth. Hmm. Dre, Dre is a perfectionist. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people don't understand. If, if he don't like the way it sounds, he's not going. Go I got another perfectionist in my corner right now. His name is Mash. Yeah. And this motherfucker is crazy. <laughs> this motherfucker. Well, he wants the let, best out of you. Let me say one word right. He remind me of Dre. Man, I don't, I don't like, I don't like that. I don't. Why you keep rapping over these whack beats? He <laughs> <was> like, what? <laughs> I thought the song was cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I ain't paying for none of that shit. Nigga, this Jubico, nigga. I ain't keep rapping over whack beats. Them niggas, man, well, you gonna scratch that. <laughs> I be getting banged on, bro. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, now let me answer this. Um, can you name some of the producers that you've worked with back then? Uh, I, I know you you mentioned Dre, and if I'm co- I'm correct, uh, Timbaland. Yeah. Okay. Timberland, we made him did a good song called "Have Fun" on the way I'm on the way I am album. That was okay. a great song. Um, Warren G, Ice Cube, well not not the producer Ice Cube, DJ Pooh, like like uh, a lot of Battle Cat, like Battle Cat was like somebody that helped me grow a lot. You know, it's just. There's a lot of producers that I've been around. Uh, S Dog, like um, let me see, uh, Scott Storch, Jelly Roll, Black Tovin. Okay. Like you know what I mean? Like okay. There's a lot of people that built uh, the way that I critique my style. Okay. You know what I mean, it wasn't it wasn't just a a one person effort. Of course. You know what I mean? Right. Did you do some stuff with Quick as well? Yeah. Okay. And then they. The name is called. The name of the song is called "Love Slave." Okay. Say, I, I just need me and get a le- eleven. Says she was, but she wasn't my cousin. <laughs> 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 okay. Sexually, she can be so misleading. Secretly, between the sheets, then she's leaving. My love slave, love slave, yeah. That'll work, man. Lying ass bitch. <laughs> I, I had to tell I had to tell my motherfucker wife use my cousin. <laughs> now get the story straight, bitch, before you go over there. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got you got to drop an album, bro, a comedy album. Oh, I'm saying it's gonna be fun. This next album is funny, even if it's just one liners. Yeah, just, I'm gonna go get on stage. If this rap shit don't work, I'm going to this comedy store. <laughs> Fuck rap. <laughs> it's gonna be called Fun Turnal. If Jubico with with Maz and P Wilson don't work. I'm going to open mic on Comedy Store. <laughs> and then I'm going to rap my songs while I'm talking shit. 
Okay, now let me ask you this. Uh, um, favorite comedians, I have to ask you. Michael Epps, Cat Williams, and Michael Hart. Okay. You Shit. know why? Why? Because they don't give a fuck. What about Kevin Hart? That's what I just said. No, you said Michael Hart. Yeah, that's his first name. Okay. <laughs> I don't know him on first name basis, Big Doug. But okay. He changed his name to Kevin. Okay. He didn't like Michael. What about uh? He don't look like a he don't look like a, a guy's angel anyway. He looks like a a, a, a midget nigger demon. So, it's <laughs> and you can joke back, nigga. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you got a short man complex. <laughs> Keep doing them Capital One commercials. Capital One. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, and they're giving you no credit. Now, you know, we got a couple of minutes before we take a break, but I wanted to ask you something. Yes, sir. Your first album, mm-hmm. it, I ho- hopefully I got this information correct. It was supposed to drop. There was a big hype on it. And was that the one that got leaked? Yeah, my my first album, Nice Line, I had to redo five songs because uh, my first, it was 12 songs. It was supposed to be an LP. It ended up being an EP because my fucking... I am got bootleg more than fucking cable in the hood. Like, uh, who, who, my who, homies was rolling up to me, banging my shit. My album was supposed to be out for three more weeks. No, no, but... They were like, nigga, what? Nigga, what's your album? You got my album? Fuck you mean you got my album? Yeah, I thought I was going to ask you, how do you think it got leaked? Did you give it to somebody in your manager? No. I gave it to the distribution. The next thing you know, it was everywhere. Wow. So, it, it ain't had nothing to do with me. Okay. Did you find out who it was? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> and that's why he's not here. I don't even know who he is. Okay. All right. That'll work, man. Here's what you know, we do. Hey, look. You got all these lolos and everything there. And you got the Aztec Warrior in here. We're going to have some fun in a minute. Hell yeah. But okay. I got to take it out of that because it's going to be a, an infomercial or some shit. And we're going to go to a porno group where a bitch is getting nutted in her face by a nigga. So it'll be all right. That'll work. Uh, You could do that in 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and take a break. So, okay, everybody, call somebody, text somebody, slap shit out of somebody, and let them know that Nocturnal, the comedian's in the motherfucking building. We're going to be talking about his new album dropping soon. So 10 minutes, call somebody. Let's go. Night vision. All right, what up? It's your boy King Cash right here at Rodium Radio with the homie Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yo, what up? It's your boy Trouble P here at Rodium Radio with your boy Tony A. The Wizard. Make sure y'all subscribe and tune in. West Coast. Yo, 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 yo. What it do? This your boy, Big Happy. One Hood Admiral, South Central Cartel General. And you're tuned in to Rodium Radio with my boy, Tony A. The wizard. Stay locked in. Hello, everybody. This is Baki Fadiya. And you're listening to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard. Hey, what's up? What's up, my people? Hey, Trouble Kid right here, you know, in the house. Shout out to Tony A, the wizard, and shout out Rhodium Radio. Much love. Thank you for having me. What up, world? It's YQ, Young Quicks, and right now you're listening to the OG, Tony A, the wizard, on Rhodium Radio. Make sure to keep it locked, subscribe, comment, hate. It don't matter, man. We get into it. It'll five stand up. Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy, Mark Cruz. You're now tuned in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, the wizard, the legend. Tap in. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy Queenie. You're tuning into Rhodium Radio. Check my man, 28 Wizard, every Wednesday and Sunday. Stay tuned. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what it is. What's up, Pimpin? It's your boy, Johnny Boy, a.k.a. Mr. Las Vegas, at Rhodium Radio with your boy, Tony A. The Wizard. Yes, catch us every Wednesday and Sunday. Gia. Hey y'all, this is Elvia Cadena here at Rhodium Radio with motherfucking Tony A, the wizard. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and share.
Can I get a moment of your time? Hey, it's your boy Lucky Sun Zhu from Hood Stocks Podcast. Hey, fuck with one of the best podcasts in the game, Tony A, The Wizard, Rhodium Radio. Don't motherfucking play with it. Don't sleep on it. Hey, HA, stand the fuck up. Yes, sir. What's up? This is Clever from the Brown Side. Make sure you guys tune in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A, The Wizard. If not, you're a bitch. What's cracking? It's your boy Young Thrive right here with the homie Tony A, the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. Don't forget to subscribe, man. Check out the best interviews on the West Coast. Yeah. I'm on the Rhodium Radio. <laughs> what up? It's ODM from Light of Shade of Brown. You know your daddy's favorite rapper, your mama's favorite DJ, <laughs> plus that YouTube star. You know what I mean? RBG fam. Light of Shade all day with the homie Tony A. Right here, Rhodium Radio, Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's go. What's up, y'all? This is Lalia Coronado. I'm here on Rhodium Radio, and you can tune in on Sundays and Wednesdays with Tony A, the motherfucking wizard. What's up, y'all? This is your boy Raz Kaz, and you are tuned into Rhodium Radio with my big homie, Tony A, the wizard. What's up? This is Truth with Tony A, the wizard at Rhodium Radio. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel live Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. Tune in. What's up, what's up? This is Lalo KB desde Atlanta. You're listening to Rodium Radio with Tony A, the Wizard. Yo, you know what it is. It's your boy OG Rome, a.k.a. Mr. Everywhere, repping Road Dogs Entertainment. Make sure you tune in to Tony A, the Wizard at Rodium Radio. What up, what up? You know what it is. It's the L.A. West Coast native, the Vario, And you got to tap in with my boy Tony A, the Wizard at Rodium Radio every Wednesday and Sunday. Come on, it's your boy Isaac Palau on Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Tune in every Wednesday and Sunday. Hey, what's up? This is Lady Bands. Make sure you're tuning in to Rhodium Radio with Tony A. the Wizard, Sundays and Wednesdays. Yo, what's up? This is Jimmy from Urban Kings. Make sure you tune in with Tony A. the Wizard on Rhodium Radio. This is A.O. to the Saint coming to you live from Rhodium Radio, hosted by my homeboy, Tony A. the Wizard. That's right, baby.
Yo, what's up? It's Bella. I'm here on Rodium Radio with my boy Tony A. The Wizard. Stay tuned. Yo, it's Ray Monique on Rodium Radio with Tony A. The motherfucking wizard. Tune in and subscribe. What's going down, everybody? This is Big Rich G here at Rodium Radio with Tony A. You guys got to check this out, man. Don't miss out. Tune in. It's your boy, Producer A, here at Rotom Radio. It's your boy, Tony A. Make sure y'all subscribe every Sunday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. with the dopest podcast popping in the motherfucking West Coast. Make sure y'all subscribe. Peace. Yeah, this is Pablito here at Rodium Radio. I'm here with Tony A, the wizard. Tune in. What's cracking? It's your boy Noel G in the house, a.k.a. Hector. You guys know what time it is right here with the Rhodium Radio Show, hosted by your boy, Tony A, the wizard. <laughs> Keep listening. We got something good for you. What's good, beautiful ladies? It's your boy, MC Magic. Tony A, the wizard. You already know. Rhodium Radio Show. Turn it up. Mm. Yo, what's up? Good with y'all. This your boy, Big Prodigy, from the legendary South Central Cartel. And I'm over here chilling with my homeboy, Tony A. The Wizard, on the Rhodium Radio Show. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe to the page on YouTube. And by the way, check out that interview with yours truly. You dig? Wes. What's up, guys? This is my YouTube. You're watching Rodium Radio with Tony A. The Wizard. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Little Silent from VOTG, the voice of the ghetto man. Tune in every Sunday and Wednesday to Rodeo Radio. You already know, hosted by the legend himself, Tony A. the Wizard, man. Don't miss out, man. That should be active out here. What's up, everyone? This is Antonio Palayo. I'm here at Rodeo Radio with Tony A. the Wizard. Make sure to subscribe. Yo, what's up, everybody? L.A. Baseball Head here, also known as L.E.F.C. Soccer Head, chilling on Rhodey Young Radio with my homeboy, Tony A., the Wizard. Welcome back, everyone, to Rodeo Radio, episode 263. And once again, get your medicated cookies from Nacho Granny's Cookies. They're the bomb. Once again, uh, um, the it will be on the description where you can click on Nacho Granny's Cookies on uh, Instagram. So make sure you get it. Make sure you uh, uh, hit her up. I'm laughing because this guy told, just told me something off air. But I'm going to let him say it. So we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it. Uh, my name is Borat, and I'm on Tony Air Radio. I want to let you know your white pussy is loose as a wetter sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her do kegels. <laughs> wow. Now that's a loose ass pussy. Right. So <laughs> that's some funny shit right there. Oh man. Y you know <laughs> See now you opened up my fucking my fucking comedy perverted side. <laughs> I almost actually look like bat wings. <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> stupid. He said, "Look like bad ways." No, no. See, she wants you to piss in a uh, Gatorade bottle because your dick won't fit in a red water bottle. So she got, you got to piss with the big bottle. And my dick won't fit. I just piss with that. Fuck it. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I, I, you know what? You ever drove on the freeway and had to piss in the Gatorade bottle? No, to I piss never. on yourself. No, have you? Are you trying to swerve on the freeway? Hell yeah. And I, and I got to do an interview like right now. I pissed on myself while I got here. For real? Yeah, I was trying to piss the Gatorade bottle. I got to roll in my suit. Okay. I was driving on the freeway trying to get here on time. I was 10 minutes late. And I shook your hand. That's messed up, bro. Yeah, I made sure you shook my hand. <laughs> <laughs> hurry it up, hurry up and get you the piss. The pissy hand. The piss. Yeah. Peepee hands. Yeah. I was just fucking with you. I didn't do that. But still, it, it was funny why, why it lasted. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start drinking so this another side of me might come out. Okay, let's do it. Oh, I need some Red Bull. You got another Red Bull? Oh, no, yeah. but you know what? I didn't drink this one. It gives I, you I, I just, wings. I just poured it. It yeah, gives you bat wings. There you go. No, just just pour it. Okay. Look, look. I got this. I got this for you. 
Go ahead, take it. It's got bat wings. It'll give you bat wings, bro. Oh yeah, that's what's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, but um, that's good. It kind of looks like piss now that you think about it. It looks like a big jar of piss. <laughs> oh, you want man. some pistol cuffs? <laughs> oh, okay, man. now I'm gonna talk about a great Hispanic holiday: the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead. That's yeah. right. Hey, Chris, so look. That's when you're allowed to kill people for one day. They had the original day where you get allowed to kill people you don't like. Are you, are you talking about the purge? <laughs> yeah, the purge. The purge is the day of the day. Okay, now let me ask you this. Uh, uh, would you be for a purge? You know, I just go buy, I go uh, to the TRGs and go get a crate of grenades and start throwing grenades at people. Sick. Happy birthday! <laughs> Yeah, keep going. <laughs> but make sure you don't buy blanks. Yeah, ask them how many seconds was the grenades when I tried to buy a box of them. And they said, it depends. I said, are y'all tripping? <laughs> so you mean I might try to throw it? It's going to blow up my motherfucking hand? Uh, all right, all right. No. He said, me don't know. It depends. All right, yeah. Let me get the whole crate. Let me finish that. <laughs> the whole pallet. <laughs> Yeah, forty dollars a pop. Okay. So anybody wants some grenades from TRGs, go to Long Beach, you go on off of twelve, go off of twelve and with it, you'd be good. All right, all right. Let's talk about the new EP. We you got you got about six songs coming out. Oh, and once again, what's the name of the EP again? Extra Pussy. Extra Pussy. Okay. So my the name of, the name of Extra Pussy is Night Vision. Okay, night vision. <laughs> okay, why why night vision? Because I got extra pussy and I can see at night. Okay, okay, that'll work. No, but for real, I got um, seriously, I got Miss Toe on it, which is a great friend of mine. I got Crooked Eye on it. Uh, I got a Tupac unreleased Tupac song. Now when you I say got you got Meezy on it, uh, he's a new artist from Long Beach. But you know he he from the North Side. He knew, he grew up in the North. He grew up on the Carmen Little Project, so he he's a he's a project baby. So we trying to make sure he don't go to jail. But he's gonna be on my first single. And, and guess what the name of the song is? What's that? It ain't enough time of the day to give a fuck about what you wanna do. That nigga's funny. I like, yeah, let's keep that. <laughs> and it be funny as hell. But now you mentioned Tupac. How did that come about? Uh, well, his mom passed away, got rest of soul, and then she gave the credits to Big Sight, and all of a sudden, he he supposedly caught a heart attack. Well, he was very healthy because Big Side stayed working out. So I don't know how the fuck he got a heart attack. I mean, that was weird. But anyway, so Mo P from Master P mm -hmm. did the beat and did the song, and then Crooked Eye got on it for me, and, and it sounded good. And Crooked Eye is cold. You know, you know Crooked Eye says the real shit. You know Crooked Eye said because I'm nocturnal. <laughs> and they can bang on me on my own song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my homie. Okay, now let me ask you this, because people may be asking, before we get back to your EP on the release date, video, etc. cetera, uh, um, w w how did you get the name, or how did you come up with the name Nocturnal? And did you have a name before that? My first rap name was Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss, okay. And, you know and why was that? You know they weren't going for that. Okay. I always wanted to seem like I was educated and smart. Oh, my brother ain't gonna be Dr. Seuss, nigga, watch. That shit didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then my second rap name was Nature Boy. Nature Boy? And I got tatted on my chest, Nature Boy, nigga. And then Nas came out with a nigga named Nature on his album. Fuck that rap name off. But but why Nature Boy? I mean, because it sounds like you'd be walking around the neighborhood butt naked or something or what? No, because it's <laughs> maybe. <laughs> But you know what? Really, to tell you the truth, I smoked a lot of weed at a real early age. So, okay. under, under the tattoo, it's got a weed leaf. It's got a weed joint under it. Like, it's Nature Boy with a weed on it. Oh, okay, okay. So, you know, it's Nature Boy. Like, you know okay. I mean? Some natural shit. Right. But I can give a bitch some natural dick if that's what you want. <laughs> I mean, because it's natural. So, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all edibles. <laughs> It's organic. It's organic protein edibles. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, that'll work. That'll work. So it, is it small like an edible? Well, it, it's, it's like, it looks like a Cuban cigar. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a Havana edible. <laughs> I thought you were going to say anaconda. Yeah, it's a Havana edible. Okay, Havana edible. That's yeah, a good one. It's Havana Joe. Okay. Edible. Okay, so it was Nature Boy. Uh, uh, and Havana then, edible. So Dr. Seuss, Nature Boy, and what was next? These motherfucking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what comes next. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have a fun up in the building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 how I get that. You know, we don't ever want the world to be boring at all. And last time I checked it, I was at Rodeo Radio and all these motherfuckers it was crazy as fuck, so we having fun. And don't forget that her lips are, are loose as the uh, the wizard's sleeve. Well, if you spell Rodeo and back as Meduar, that's the ugly bitch. <laughs> He's the Meduar. <laughs> that's the bitch we fuck last. Okay. Oh, you want some dick too? Three o'clock in the morning. Ah, uh, we boy, you want some dick too? We sorry, we we forgot about you. <laughs> okay, so Doctor Sue's Nature Boy, what comes next? For, uh, I'm gonna I'm do the I'm gonna do the Scarface. I'm gonna tell you the order. You said what comes next? First, you get the power. Then you get the money. Then you get the bitches. So, I think I'm getting the money and the power. I think uh, I'm about to fuck all the cows on the way home, <laughs> on the way down the hill. <laughs> it's all fucking game here. And if any of y'all bitches is single, maybe not. We can fuck. We just keep cordial. <laughs> Just don't call me again I might change my number <laughs> Okay But you can look online And find me on IG anytime Just, just call me when you wanna fuck Okay I don't got time for bullshit Married or not? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing we going to, If I'm married We're going to Utah <laughs> Big love <laughs> We're gonna go to Utah And I'm gonna go ahead 12 acres with 8 houses and I'm going to see y'all bitches whenever I feel like. Uh, you got the afternoon, you got the evening. Yeah. I'm going to come fucking dip, as a real nigga should. <laughs> okay. Then you're going to call me a real dog. Hey, nigga, ain't that but a dog, you motherfucker right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, now. Nocturnal, how did that name come about? I worked on the back docks when I was at the pen. Uh-huh. And my big homie named Crybaby, he was a uh, shot caller in the pen. And um, he like, you keep trying to change your name. Huh? You work at the back docks, you unloading the pallet jacks with the trucks to get the food with the pen. Just call yourself nocturnal. Because you at night all the time anyway. I was like, all right, whatever. So then I turned into damn shit. Somebody had a name, of course, nocturnal. So I had to spell it different. So it's candle C hyphen T U R N. Asterisk AL. <laughs> okay. I had to spell it different. But that worked. It worked out. That, that worked. Not turn Al. <laughs> I didn't know my middle, my, I didn't know my last name was AL. Okay. Okay. So my, my first name is Not. My second name is Turn. That's my middle name. And my last name is Al. I, who the fuck has the last name AL? Okay, you do, yeah. <laughs> Hey, my last name starts with A.L. Alvarez. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, but that's that's our that's A L V. So that's I'll lift the vagina up. Like. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love it, bro. I lift the vagina every. That'll work. <laughs> Revin day. Okay. Okay. Now. Let me ask you this. As far as the EP, when does it drop? You got a date for it? Uh, that's a match question. Match. So, so when is the EP dropping? The end of August. The end of August. That's when we expect it. Now, uh, I have to ask you, and I have to ask Mash, Mash, if you're listening, um, is there, would there be any hard copies available? So, like, when he does shows. Yeah, he, we, we know Grind in the Street, too. Okay. Like, is it streaming industry? Yeah, streaming industry. Is it, is it streaming industry nowadays? Yeah. But not got a fan base? Yeah. That's, that goes back before the streaming industry. 
Of course. So we gonna serve. No, 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 you're going to hit the camera. You're going to hit the camera. So we're going to serve the, the, the people of Knox fan base. We're going to press hard copies and get out there and grind with them. Okay. So make sure y'all tune in. Night Vision coming and it's banging. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Come on, Knox. Uh, uh, come on, Dr. Shoes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bash, Bash brought back what you would call entertainment. He brought back... A song that people thought I should have did a video for a long time ago, which is LA Night Day. So please go to YouTube and check it out. I would greatly appreciate it. And what's the uh, name of the song again? LA Night and Day. LA Night and, and Day. A lot of people like that song. It's it's, it's uh one of, it's off of the last landing album. It's my first one of my first songs of the EP. Okay. But the funny part about it is, excuse me, is that not matching his shit with Jubico, his marketing plan is so impeccable. So he's, he's inviting me back to a new age of people where him bringing back old songs that people's parents used to listen to. And so they'd be like, oh, I do remember that artist. They'd be like, damn, my, my parent, my dad, my mom used to listen to him. So the bargaining schemology of things is to get the new audience and the older audience, of course. Yeah. But the the younger people will remember because their parents used to listen to me. Yeah. Because I've been in the game for 20 years. Yeah. So all you new booty motherfuckers, make sure your bitch is over 30 so I can fuck her. <laughs> It'll be all good. If you don't know the bitch is 30, you didn't know, bring that bitch around me. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't want to feel like I'm fucking, I don't want to feel like I'm fucking your sister. <laughs> now, 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 as far as production is concerned, producers, uh, uh, who did the production on these uh, six song EP? DK. Uh, which is a great producer. Okay. And then BH, who is the commissioner for Orange County. Very good dude. Okay. I, that's one of the songs I did with, with Miss Toy. Um, and then Mash did a beat uh, with his forehead on the wall. <laughs> he said, boop, boop, bop, bop, boop, bop. He said, rap on that, nigga. <laughs> he just looped it, huh? Yeah. And he looped it. He looped it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, Pete Wilson, you guys got to check out for him. He's he's a really good dude. Like he raps about some real serious shit. Wait, are you saying Pete Wilson? P. The, the oh, P. P. Wilson. Period. Wilson. I thought you were talking about the 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 fucking the polit the politician Pete Wilson. Oh yeah, that's him. He's rapping. Oh. <laughs> he got a new album coming out. Okay. Pete Wilson. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> now, 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 let me ask you this. What's the name of the first single match? He got. Oh, he got a mixtape. Uh, Street Broker. He got a clothing line called Street Brokers. I'm always wearing it. Uh, he got his clothing line, Street Brokers, is, is a vicious clothing line. So look online, uh, streetbroker.com. And just remember one thing Pete Wilson. <laughs> Uh, he said he got a, a mixed dick in your mouth, white bitches. And so <laughs> all you gotta do is let him do the hula hoop in your face. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, I'm having a fucking bomb ass time, bro. We have fun. Yes, exactly. Now, now let me ask you this hypothetical question, okay? Mm -hmm. Say um, you get a phone call tomorrow. I do it. Yeah, no, you know you get a phone call tomorrow. Okay, then you answer, hello, and uh -huh. yo, what up? It's me, fool. What's up? And who's this? And he goes, game. And you say, what's up? What you want to do? And he goes, let's do a song. Would you be down? Hell yeah. Okay. You know why I'd be down? Why? Because I'm going to tell him, let's battle rap. Oh, okay. Would you, uh, and let's make some money out of it. Would you do a versus against him? No, when we do the song... We're going to have Miss Toy do the hook. Okay. And me and the game talk shit about each other. Mm. And make a good song out of it. On one song. Okay. And then after that, I'm going to tell my homegirl to go buy a deal and fuck the game in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> he likes G-strings anyway. Okay, you keep mentioning G-strings. What's up with that? Because he worked at the Blue Oyster. Stripping <laughs> for bitches. Look, if you guys don't know about the Blue Oysters, go look at Police Academy. Okay, so. <laughs> no, but is that, are those rumors true? Like, he was a male stripper. 
and his bitch, his baby mom had a change of heart. Right, right. On the show. Okay, so okay, so she fucked a Nigerian nigga. Right, right, right. She but, had a change of heart. She was like, that nigga gave me some real dick. Oh, okay. And left that nigga. Oh, and know. then this nigga was a male stripper wearing G strings. When you see a male stripper, and he saved from Palmdale. He saved from Condeville. He grew up in Palmdale. Okay. I mean, now when you say he was a male, I'm from the South Bay. I'm from Long Beach. Right, right. So when I see people from Long Beach and I see people from my South Bay area, they know who Nocturnal is. They know who Royal Harbor is. They know who the fuck my family is. Right, right. He didn't grow up there. Okay. Now when you say male stripper, you said does, did he strip for males or for women? I don't know what he stripped for. I oh, ahead. okay. But you just know that he was a stripper. I just know what his bitch said. Don't change heart. <laughs> Is that still available on YouTube or what? Yes. You can look that right now. Wow, okay. I, we can post that after the show. Okay. And put it online after the show. I, I'm only... This bitch got to change her heart. <laughs> but his baby mama had to change her heart. Hey, you know what? That's kind of horrible. To be on TV and your bitch leave you on TV? That's just not good. Wow. Well... I mean, you should have took a C90 that day or something. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you this: She, she took a blue diamond, a C ninety something. Keep yeah, your dick, keep your dick hard. <laughs> see, see, here's the thing though: if Jerry Springer or any of those TV shows call you, don't go on. You already know it's a setup. One thing for sure is, or Maury. I, I'll go on there. I'll go on there because it's gonna be funny to me. And be like, Maury, you are not the father. <laughs> Okay, see, see. How many kids you got, Maury? Well, I have five children. You are not the father. Okay. Now, now, now let's just say that Jerry Springer hey, calls you. Why being fucking people? Why are you at the show? <laughs> say Jerry Springer calls you. Hey, we want to bring you in the show because we want to reveal your secret crush. Would you well, go? Well, Jerry, I know you're married. I know you like fucking black bitches, so how many want? <laughs> Would you go on there so that he can reveal your secret crush? My secret crush is Jan Jackson. I've been wanting to fuck her since she was Tootie. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not going to get no answer, so. That's a gay dancer. My secret crush was Tootie. <laughs> that was Jan Jackson on the damn show. And she had braces. I was just going through puberty. I ain't never wanted a bitch to suck my dick with braces on except for Jan Jackson. Okay. <laughs> But did you ever have one with braces? In real life? Maybe. <laughs> I ain't gonna say her name because she was fucking ugly in a track star. Her body was good, but her face was from hell. <laughs> All right. That bitch had Mr. Ed's mouth. Mr. Ed's mouth. <laughs> Damn, okay. I promise these guys an interview. We got a comedy stand-up show. I love saying, buddy. I be having fun. This is a great show. I love it. Well, you can ask me anything you want. Okay, can you... I don't give a fuck. Can you sing the hook for Bad Intentions for us? Hook for Bad Intentions? Yeah. Oh, it's a... Uh, got a cup, raise it up. Got a blunt, blaze it up. That's your bitch on his dust. Really, I don't give a fuck. All I already know is your hoe wants to be with me. She ain't playing what I'm saying. She creeps with me and sleeps between the sheets. When she's all alone, she sneaks out to be with me. What I'm saying, she ain't playing. She creeps with me and sleeps between the ooh. Just for all y'all niggas, I want to let you know I just snitch on your bitch. <laughs> So you've been with a lot of women that have been taken then. Uh, but you're not one to kiss and tell. Well, I know. They said I got to leave by 8 a.m. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody, <laughs> there was one of the ladies night, or what a night. <laughs> <laughs> She went. <laughs> 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 That's that lie that bitch be telling niggas. And hey, we could have a lady that and she had the roof sucking my dick. Do, 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 do. Go. No, that was the Go Go 3000. Go Go, go Gadget? 
Okay, now, now let me ask you this. According to rap songs, uh -huh. according to rap songs, girls cheat more than guys. Uh, well, I mean, they did have the knowledge of evil before they put it on us. They got kicked out the garden of Eden. And those were evil bitches. The garden of evil? Of the, evil? The, the, garden of, the garden of Eden. Okay. They got us and that bitch. We got kicked out because of that bitch. She didn't want to fuck the serpent. Stupid bitch. How long did she know the knowledge of evil before she said, hey, let me, look, let me suck your dick? <laughs> You know, that shit feel good. Are oh, you gonna give some pussy too? All right. <laughs> God was like, what you be doing? He had his, he had his dick from God. <laughs> nah, I ain't know, God. I ain't know how I'm supposed to be doing all that. Between the shit. Get shape. your ass down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> Told you to eat with that fucking tree, stupid motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta remix that hook. Um, what was it? Your snake uh, wants to be with me. So. All I really know is he really wanted to be with me. And she wasn't paying. <laughs> got the kid at the garden. She slept with me. And got the <coughs> kid at the garden. Oh, shit. This tequila's kicking in. All right. Okay. You know what's another fucking banger? Bang, bang. Everywhere I go, I never see. That's Miss Toy. That shit is tough, bro. I love that fucking song. Late nights is full of letting the whistles as it goes by. Murder arrives anytime. But it's take flight when the four five ignites. Some hearts give a beat, some get blew out and never relate. Hmm. That dude was like, hmm. This nigga got it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still got it? Ah. Uh, yesterday I might have had it. Yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. I think I got it tomorrow. Okay. I think um, right after the interview, and I go back to the studio. I think I got it. Okay. And and I'm gonna send you a, a, a copy of what I think I got. Okay. All right. I'll offer I'm you gonna go in the vocal booth. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the vocal booth and have a good part for your show. I'm gonna go to the vocal booth and just bend a bitch over and just fuck her from behind and beat her back in. <laughs> <laughs> and just sing you the sounds for that and just put it in the background of my of my interview. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Did you clap a lot of cheeks on the road, man? Oh uh, man. You can't even ask me how many bitches that <laughs> do I think I fuck because I can't remember. I'm pretty sure I got a bunch of illegitimate. But um What about white chicks? I'm so sorry <laughs> for anybody that has one of my illegitimates when I was young, dumb, and full of cum. <laughs> if you have a child that's a natural baby, I was an organ donor, so but I didn't get fifty dollars for it. So <laughs> I just want you to know at any given moment, you can say dick of your dad right there, because my video about to come out. <laughs> but after that, if you call me, I need you to put my dick in your mouth. <laughs> oh, man. Send her, send her your cash app. I'm going to send her. And my cash app will be 1 800 10, 10 inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. 1 800 6 foot 2, 10 inches. 6 foot 2, 10 inches. Uh, all right. I might got nine and three quarters. We'll figure it out. You, just, you measure it. Depending on how hard you make my dick when I bust your mouth. Oh, shit, that's just fucking hilarious, bro. Fuck. Okay, end of August, we got the EP dropping. Um, six songs. Night Vis Vision. Night Vision. Jubico uh, Entertainment. Yes, and um, Spec Visuals. We're going to have a single release party in Amsterdam at the Red District. At the <laughs> okay. And we all buying some hoes, and we just fucking to the music. <laughs> Okay, Mash, uh, are you, you going to have a, a release party at all? Yeah, we're going to do several. Okay, several. We're going to do several. several uh, yeah. We're going to we're gonna have several release parties. We're going we're gonna to have listening parties up and down the coast. You know. Let me know. Let me know so that way I can promote it here. For sure. And then you invite it. You Absolutely. Know, you know, you come out, you know. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? You invite it, man. Red carpet to you. Okay, thank you, man. Thank you. And I'll bring, I'll bring, uh, uh, um, 
Nocturnal the drinks. No. <laughs> he don't drink, though. That's what y'all don't even get. He's just crazy like that. Okay, he's just crazy. All right. He's crazy Come on, like Noc. So, so, just to be clear, if you want to be fly, I need some Voss water. <laughs> y'all want to bring me some gas and some shit? Bring me like 12 pints of, of Voss water. Okay. And then... I need your pussy to be wet because <laughs> I want to fuck real long. Okay. I'm now, sober now, so I ain't going to pass out when I'm halfway fucking you. So you, you already fucked up and got me sober. So this bitch got a problem. Okay, okay. Now you expect all bitches, white bitches, everybody? I ain't never fucked a white bitch. I wouldn't have tried it. <laughs> they smell like wet peppers, but I'm just saying. <laughs> wet peppers? Wet Damn. puppies. Oh, wet puppies. Damn. They wash their hair, get out of the shadow, they smell like a wet puppy. Like, hell, hell no. Somebody told me this. I'd rather smell cocoa butter and oil grease, baby oil. <laughs> baby oil and cocoa butter. That's a little different to me. Wet puppies. Damn, yeah, I never heard that one. Yeah. Somebody told me uh, pee, if I, if pee I and I bacon. With a, if, I, if I mess with a Hispanic chick, I'd rather smell a habanero. Habanero. Because <laughs> <laughs> this I know she's spicy. It's spicy. You got to say it's, it's spicy. spicy. <laughs> Really? Ah, ah, shit, that's dope. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, if Dre would have called you, would you still work with him? Hey, he's only yeah, just chilling. Dude. He got a billion dollars. You don't give a fuck about nothing. He just relaxes. All right. I mean, if I if I actually try to get in contact with him, I could. But Dr. Dre, he built my career. There's nothing that he he has to do for me except for just let me do. Mm -hmm. He helped me build. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, the thing being is. I got this guy named Matt that think he know what he's doing. We're going to see how that works out. Okay. From Jubico Entertainment. That's the label I'm signed to. Okay. You know, he just asked me yesterday. What's that? He said, let's have a meeting so I see what your marketing and your publishing plan is. So we had a meeting. Okay. How did that go? I got out of the car. He's like, so yeah, what is your marketing and your publishing plan? I said, uh... Last time I checked, Jubico Records is your entertainment company. It's your, it's your company. So what is your marketing promotion place? What did you say? I said, it's up to you. It's not up to me. He was like, okay, is that else to talk about? That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> Nigga, you just had me. The gas is $7. <laughs> you just had me drive 40 miles for nothing. <laughs> and it's gas money, nigga. Speaking and I'm hungry. Speaking about gas, did, oh, how did, we I need some gas, buddy. Yeah. Speaking of gas, did you vote for Biden? Huh? Did you vote for Biden? Fuck no. <laughs> that motherfucker see now. <laughs> oh shit. Now, now let me ask you this: a, a political question. Yeah. If Trump were to run again, do you think he would win? He did win. They just cheated him. Really? Yep. You had the inside scoop. The inside scoop is Trump. That Trump Tower in every motherfucking country there is. I don't see how he gonna lose. He don't need the politicians' money. Okay. He got his own money. I went to a motherfucking Trump convention for him to get voted for. That motherfucker gave you fifty dollars when you walked in, and gave you food for free. What nigga ain't gonna go to that? Yeah. <laughs> Was the food good? That nigga didn't lose. Who ain't gonna want to eat? Get fifty bucks for free. Fifty, that's good gas money right now. What you? Oh man, they ain't even have a tank right now. Well, I know that, but I had to say that. <laughs> that's a quarter tank. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Unless, unless you go to Beverly Hills, so you know it's always fucked up. Yeah, because it's probably like three fifty nine in Beverly Hills, but in the hood we don't want you going to Beverly Hills, so it's gonna be six dollars. Six dollars, yeah. Is that what don't really? come, don't come to Van Nuys, Beverly Hills, in the Valley. We don't want you here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really nine dollars because when you go in there, you at least buy a forty. So. You get you get two gallons for twelve eighty five. Two gallons. Two. Okay. All uh, right. So, so what people got to start doing is turn back to alcohol and drink and piss in your gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Oh man! All right, all right. So, um, so back to my question: If Trump would have run again, do you think he'll win? 
He probably will. Yeah. Okay. Would you he, want for- he he helped the country? He didn't hurt it. Okay. If, if he called you personally and goes, "Knock, I really want you to perform at my birthday," would you? And he paid you ten G's. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Not even for ten G's. Uh, no, I tell him call Kanye, which y'all weird motherfucking ass. <laughs> okay, what about for free food and fifty dollars? You wouldn't do it, huh? For How free much? free food and fifty dollars. Nah. <laughs> okay, well, what's up with Kanye? I know. Well, you- I mean, Easy E would have did it with Ronald Reagan. He died. I'm not going to the fucking White House. <laughs> not, that's not my vision. I never had dinner with the president. Right. I never had dinner with the president. That's what Ice Cube said. I never had dinner with the president. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm not gonna do. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, what if it was just at his crib? Who? Donald Trump, like at his crib, and he said, "I'm not president. I just I love your music." He cut in my house, and, and I had my people cook the food. Okay, he, he can do that. Okay, I don't, so he ain't no politician or nothing like that. He's just smart. Right, right, right. He but goes. One thing, one thing I won't do. He let him hand me a plate and be like, oh, here you go. You know, the first thing I'm going to do is like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to trade plates. Yeah, but motherfucker going to poison you. Right, I mean, let me see if you will eat your plate. <laughs> that you just gave me, I'm going to switch plates with you. <laughs> you eat, now you eat that shit. <laughs> then I might want to eat my food. You might, Because you might, it might be the same thing in everything. Right. But you already might got the cure for everything. Right. For real. Right. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, yes or no question. Do you think COVID was man-made? Do you know what COVID-1 is? No, I don't. The common cold. And you're it still right. ain't got a cure for that shit. Yeah. They don't even have a cure for the common cold. So now they got COVID-19. Why don't y'all scientists cure something and stop putting faggot juice in the water? <laughs> What's faggot juice? Fuck. <laughs> Next is gonna be COVID twenty. They're gonna bump it up uh, a notch. They're gonna, how you had to take? It's gonna be no more vaccinations. They're gonna have to have you have to have to have you drinking Arrowhead vaccinations. Arrow. <laughs> it's gonna be in the water. <laughs> oh shit! You know Biden was already talking about for uh, the next epidemic, and I was like, what the fuck? Like this guy's already preparing people. You for know what the word epidemic mean? Tell me. Something that's gonna create some fear around and it's really not even true because yeah. to tell you the truth, COVID one is the common cold. I still don't have a cure for that. So now you're gonna tell me COVID nineteen, we supposed to be scared. More people die from rabies every year and cancer every year, and people die from COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why are we not paying attention to that? No, you're right. I think people have more. It's a ploy to make money. Yeah, I think people have more of a chance of fucking. You know that you know that dollar store used to be the Dollar Tree. Right, Dollar Store. Yeah. Okay. And after the pandemic, when they opened back up after two years, it, it, it needed to be renamed to the Dollar Twenty Five Store. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes two dollars. That's some bullshit. Yeah. I'm about to sue their ass. Matter of fact, uh, I hope y'all hear this because. You're lying. What's your name, Dollar? Talking about Dollar Tree. You're supposed to be a Dollar Twenty Twenty a Dollar Twenty Five Tree. <laughs> Suing you bitches yesterday. <laughs> Matter of fact, I already got a lawsuit and I sent it in the paperwork yesterday. <laughs> and I'm gonna follow through with that shit. Okay, now uh, uh, we got a couple of minutes left. I want to ask you, what you do tomorrow, Fourth of July? <sighs> Probably hang up with my son. I hope he hopefully don't blow himself up because he's he like fireworks like me. <laughs> and put some fireworks in the bitch mouth if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> the upper room. Bam, 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 bam. Came out sort of like confetti. All right. <laughs> okay. Hopefully she swallow. <laughs> oh my god. You know what, bro? I fucking love this interview, bro. Well, I don't even want to say any conversation, big dog. It's just fun. Thank you, man. You know, you know, you know, you're my elder. You know, I got respect for all all people. Like, and you know, you my elder, so I respect you. You know what I mean? You gotta understand, it's Chris Blood, S.A. Javadio's hood, rats and ratchets, ride for the West Coast. And that's Absolutely. What we do. 
That's what we do. That's what we always do. I couldn't, I couldn't be nothing without them. So y'all need to realize that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So uh, any shows coming up? I know you said you got one soon. If I'm correct, in Vegas. Uh, it's Mash. a show in Vegas, a Cannabis 2002 Award. Cannabis, okay. Uh, and then, I got anything else coming up? Yeah, we got uh, some, something in uh, Fresno. We got Fresno. something in Fresno. July 10th. July 10th. July 10th, July 10th is Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Area 51. Area 51. Area 51. Yeah. Go to the Real Nocturnal. Go to the Real Nocturnal. Yeah, your page is up on the screen. Okay. Instagram. Yeah, and you can purchase uh, this. And you can purchase ticket. the discount tickets instead of spending 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, I'll give you a ticket for a dick in your mouth and maybe $5. Okay, that'll work. So a dick in your mouth and $5. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you guys out there want discount tickets, have your girl contact him. and um, Dick in your mouth basically gets you in free. There you go. So if you guys want discount tickets, contact him at the real nocturnal. And uh um so yeah, you know what? Um oh, we having fun. And then you guys can have a, a milkshake. Oh, that's protein milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> that means I gotta do the hula hoop in the in the bitch mouth. That's extra. I, mean, I gotta do a lot of work. <laughs> that's extra work. <laughs> oh man. Shit, I I almost said something, but I, I held back because that's what game called you, and I didn't want to call you that. So, but um, <laughs> I don't give a damn when nobody called me. Did, 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 did he? Every 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 bitch I ever been around, I be like, ain't no way in hell that nigga faggot. <laughs> oh, well, you give him some uh, um. But you know what? I ain't never wore no G string to wear that blue oyster either. So. Uh, <laughs> He's in the blue oyster. That's fucking They classic. say birds of a feather flock together. I ain't never hung out with the game. <laughs> I don't know why you calling me a faggot. Okay. All right. Cool. I, well. Um, this is my Tim fourth. Tim was just from my Auntie Shirley. My big Auntie Shirley and my grandma. I, I, could, I could barely hear you, big dog. Go ahead. Auntie Shirley. I got a fat auntie named Shirley that he's strip for. And she was a tippy. <laughs> Big Shirley. He knew what that is. A tip much bigger than a quarter. Uh, her purse weighed like she did. <laughs> <laughs> he know what Big Shirley is. Anyway, the game will love you, fool. Let's do a song. All right. Let's just talk shit and make some money. That'll work. Would and you, we'll be good. You told me. Until... And tell your big brother, Face 100, we still homies, because uh, everything is always good for me and your big brother, even though you grew up in Palmdale, lying, talking about you from Compton. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Now, it's, it, earlier you had mentioned the WAC 100. Do you know WAC? Uh, yeah, I know WAC, but he, you know WAC don't give a fuck. What happened? WAC don't give a fuck. Oh, okay. Like, he think it's fun to create certain stuff off of just... Saying things like, I would say, I don't want to say anybody catch anything, but some people are kind of reckless. Like me talking shit, me and gaming. Of course. Game ain't stripping. Me, me and the game cool. Yeah. But, uh, you know, whack, he was saying some real, um, some things that, like, you can't take back. You know what I mean? I'm just glad he ain't saying it about me because. I ain't did nothing to that guy. I just hope he don't. I hope he leave me alone. Leave me out of this conversation, because the type of stuff that he says is like it's not kosher. Right. Like, you know, it's, not, it's like you know we supposed to be together, not against each other, where we just tearing each other down. So my opinion about Wack One Hundred, you know what they say about when you catch crabs, you put them in the bucket. Yeah. Okay. You know, not one of them crabs could get out of the bucket. Because the other crabs pull them down where they're trying to get out, too. Yeah. So, whack 100 is the crab in the bucket that won't let the other crab get out. Mm. Because he want to get out. And he's still stuck in the same place. And they'll DP the fuck out of him whenever they feel like it. Yeah. And that's just being real. Okay. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Now, 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 let me ask you this. He did something that he got criticized for a lot. He uh, he sat down and interviewed uh, Takashi Six Nine. Okay. I see. Uh, now, 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 now let me ask you this: 
say you had a podcast, okay? And Takashi Six Nine's manager contacted you and said, Knock, we want you to interview Six Nine. Would you do it? To ask them? Yeah, yeah. So just speak close to the mic just so everybody can, can hear. Ask, can I ask them? Yes, sir. You sitting over there, right? I'm yeah. sitting over there, right? Yeah. If I had rainbow hair, would you interview me? No. <laughs> Is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> like No, that's a real it, it sounds dumb, but I have just have to ask you. I'm just saying Takashi already let you know what he was. Yeah. A fat rat. We also got rainbow hair, so he lets you know he like getting fucked in the ass anyway. Right. So he's a faggot. And nobody cares about that. I'm just saying you can be gay if you want to. That's right. your preference. Yeah. But he got rainbow hair. So what does that say about WAC 100? Talking about you want to take up for him. Are you fucking him in the ass or what? Okay, yeah. And you talking okay. shit about my homies? Okay. Okay, I just had to ask. How do you call yourself WAC? A <laughs> hundred times. Well, what does WAC mean? Whack means he made a hundred songs and none of them went platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right. Fuck. <laughs> I wasn't expecting all this, but I'm glad you're here, Knock. <laughs> you know? Fuck. All right. And they went family. You know, you let your, your family hear it, and they that. Music. <laughs> it didn't sell past there. And he gave that shit away. <laughs> okay, we got a couple more minutes. Real right. okay. <laughs> I'm having fun now. Okay. So, Wack 100, if you do your rap better than me, uh, get online. Let's do a song. I tell you uh, a new asshole like you don't need a new piece of hair. <laughs> but like you don't need a new follower. You <laughs> always talk all that shit about everybody else. You ain't never talking no shit about me. I'm gonna talk some shit about you, Mr. Wack One Hundred. You are a West Coast affiliate that we used to respect, and your disrespect level is at an all time high. So you need to watch your mouth. Okay. All right. Um. You mentioned that Kanye had produced some music for you. Oh man, Kanye West is, is actually a great producer. Okay, uh, now I have to ask you this because today a lot of people, when they get beats from people, you know, they get them emailed and shit. Yeah. Did you actually meet Kanye? Yeah. Okay. Now, everybody says that whenever somebody gets with one of the Kardashians, the the end result is that these guys go fucking crazy. He just did what every other black man with money do because they tired of arguing with a nigger bitch, a black bitch. He married a white bitch because he was tired of the argument. So what black bitches need to do is learn how to stop talking shit to these niggas when they get rich so they don't turn to dealing with a white bitch. But you can go get a mail order black. Y'all just vlogging from Sweden. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's all the bitch know how to say. Can you make some food? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now let me ask you this. Do you think Kanye is... People have said this. That motherfucker crazy. He fucking Kanye lost his mind. Slut. Let's just be real. Yeah, yeah, okay. We, we, no, let's be real. People say this. Kanye. He it, spent a gang of money on a slut, and then she didn't give a fuck about fucking niggas in his face. Right, right. So that was his fault. Okay, but uh, no, but. Oh, you, you should be fucking him? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave. What you mean you about to leave? That's your house. So, so he's a cuck? Kanye, look, just like that motherfucker right there. <laughs> So is he a cuck or huh? do you know what a cuck is? A cuck? Yeah. He might be one. Just tell me what it is. Open that door. Yeah. Okay. A cuck is a dude that gets off watching other guys fuck his girl. He's a, he's a, what do you call it? I don't know if he's a cuck. He's a, he, he wants to control the whole situation. He wants okay. to be a controller. A narcissist type dude. And it's Will Smith a If cuck. you fucking this bitch better than he fucking her, he get mad and wanna kick your ass and don't pay you. Okay. Cause I fucked this bitch. Oh. No, I didn't. 
<laughs> is Will Smith a cuck? I have no idea. Okay. Now. But you know what I do know about Will Smith? He been a great legend for a long time. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he paved a lot of the way for African Americans, even by having a show and everything else he did. Like, Will Smith is a, is a good African American people. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something else that's funny, but people don't give credit to is Jay Leno. Jay Leno. Okay. Speaking to the mic. He had me busted a lot. I, I used to watch that show on purpose because he's fucking hilarious. On purpose. I ain't like, man. Okay, one o'clock. Here we go. <laughs> in the morning. Yeah. I stopped. My studio says one o'clock in the morning. I'm supposed to be there till six in the morning. Boom, Jay Leno's on, nigga. <laughs> Just to listen to him be stupid and funny. Yeah. And then he had R.C. the Hall. And he's like, how did you get the finger like this? <laughs> Jay Leno's he had an E.T. finger. Arsenio Hall had the E.T. finger. But Jay Little had an extra finger that he put on. Yeah. Know? Jay Little got jokes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. That was funny. Okay, now back to uh, Kanye. Mm-hmm. Here's what people say. That he's fucking crazy, he lost his mind, and then people say, no, he's a genius. I mean, I mean So, music, so music, either, either he lost his mind or he's a genius. What do you think? Both. Both? Music can do that to you. Hey, explain that if you can. Music has a way uh, of making you lose your mind and have start having anxiety and panic attacks. And you start seeing that you can't even walk to the grocery store without being a normal person and all that shit. It's, like, it's combining to where you can't even be a normal human being anymore. And that, and that affects certain people. Yeah. You know what I mean? It affects you in a way where you like, fuck, I can't even just go to the grocery store and get some fucking eggs and come back and cook omelet. Well, I get not even recognized, yeah. Well, people are like, ah, hey, we got it, they go to the They're like, what the fuck? I just want a, a carton of eggs. It's some damn beef bacon. <laughs> I just want some spam. Bitch, I still got my pajamas on. <laughs> fuck, why was I just eat some breakfast? Do you still get that? Pretty much. Okay. It's, it's, it don't bother me because I'm not really tripping like that. Because it's kind of flattering when you think about it. Yeah. But it can get a little overbearing. Of course. Right, of like course. When it's, like you, especially when you're hungry and you want to get in and get, and get the fuck out. Bitch, did you see how I went to self-checkout? Yeah. Did I look like I want to talk to a motherfucker? <laughs> Bitch, I'm in self-checkout. Do, do you think Dre still goes out by himself and gets close? Fuck goals? no. Huh. Hey, he ain't going to the store. <laughs> he can't go to the liquor store and get like an old English, huh? No. And he uh, can't go nowhere. Now, is that a good thing? No. Uh, like, you might uh, move, move to a different planet. <laughs> yeah. You can't even walk in public. That shit hurts to, to not be a normal part of the society. People don't realize that that shit hurts. It's not be able to just walk around in public with your children, your family, and just be a normal person. But this is the life that we choose, so it's our fault. Uh, so okay. it's not like something that they did to us. We did it to our damn self. Yeah, yeah. You hear me? But yeah. I wanted to be a public figure. Yes. You feel me? Yes, sir. So we can't complain about it. Right. You hear me? You just got to deal with it. But look at all the pussy. That's, that's... You know, I was trying. I was, ah, wait a minute, I got that part. He just got me. Look at all the pussy that's involved with that. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Look at all the punani. Uh-huh. That, 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 that and by the way, pussy, uh, I'm about to release another album. I need all of y'all. <laughs> I need to regroup and revamp. Everybody I've been there before, I'm about to come out again. Between the shit. And. and my dick, my dick got a little long because I fucked more, a couple more bitches. So I need y'all to know my dick gained a half inch. <laughs> so if if you need more than that, I go buy another inch because I'm about to get some money. <laughs> so oh, it'll be shit. eleven and a half instead of ten. <laughs> okay. What y'all want to do about it? Well, you gotta give me four months because that's that's when I actually get the money to do it. Yeah, four months. Cause it'll be He's out. It'll months. be out this month. I mean, three months to heal. Three months. And I'm going to start traveling. Let me ask you this. Uh, this is a serious, serious question. Because obviously you met Dre, I believe you said 1998. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you, ever, did you ever meet Jerry Heller? Jerry Heller, yes. 
Oh, you did? Yeah. What was that conversation Maisie like? He passed away. Um, I had to wanted to see if I wanted to hang or do. Because I did some stuff with Eric, uh, Eric Jr. Okay. And um, Jerry Elliott was trying to give the company to Tamika Wright. And um, he wanted to sign me to Ruthless, but I was like, I just, I wasn't, feel, you know, sometimes you don't feel a certain thing. You got feeling, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, he used to be like, I'm cool. I was trying to make it my own way. Yeah. I mean, I'm not better than nobody. I'm not um, more talented than anybody except for MASH. That's my, my, my boss. Yeah. I'm more talented than him. But <laughs> he, he's one of them used to be rapper ass niggas. Yeah. Talk about I'm retired because y'all niggas get on my nerve. He got metaphors though. He got he got bars. But anyway, uh, imagine with Jupiter Core Records, we be having fun. Me and people else saying me, Meezy and DK. But like the funny part is, Maz was talking shit to me. Nigga, you keep on rapping that bullshit. Don't make me come out of retirement. Nigga, we'll fire you. I'm like, what the fuck you just say to me? Nigga, you heard me. <laughs> Stop rubbing that whack shit on the mic. Oh, now you calling me back. I'm like, all right. So anyway, I still ain't heard this nigga get on the mic yet. But my EP about to come out. It's called Night Vision. <laughs> <laughs> but that's dope, though, because yeah. Night, Night Vision. Jubicore Records, nigga. Jubicore Entertainment. Night Vision rhymes with uh, Tony Vision. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. So, okay. Other than that, big dog, we come to the end of he, our. He wasn't changing the name to Mash Vision. Mash Vision. Hell yeah. Why not? Okay. So here we go. Um, we come to the end of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Anything that I didn't ask you, anything you want to promote, anything you want to say. If not, let's give some shout outs. If your bitch is named Michelle, I don't want to fuck her. I want to fuck all Tamikas. I want to fuck Kimberly's. And I want to fuck all white bitches because I ain't never fucked one. So, look at me up on IG, okay. Royal Harbor 93 or therealnational.com. Yeah. And if you're Hispanic, I just want to say, I, poppy. <laughs> so, if you're Hispanic you, uh, and you want to get with him, DM him, I, poppy. If you're white and you smell like wet puppies, uh, yeah, get in him. Yeah, don't get in Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you smell like uh, pee and bacon, uh, yeah. go ahead and get at him. If you smell like peanut butter and bacon, don't come out the house. <laughs> hey, hey, there's a lot of white girls I love, brothers, man. Why didn't I call him? Wait, wait, wait. All you white bitches need to call in now. <laughs> I might like a wet puppy today. <laughs> not, not mean. <laughs> so, okay. Other than that. Um, <laughs> I ask you call them K bitches. <laughs> no, he said, I ain't in board backside having straight up, straight down. Miss six o'clock. <laughs> okay. Other than that, let me give a shout out once again to my boy Alex Cervantes. Cervantes Enterprise. There's not a hoop that can't be fixed because he could do it in the mix. I'm gonna give a shout out to my boy Norbert, Rodian Radio team. Norbert be promoting the fuck out of our show. Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, my son, Be Scandalous. It's not Be Nice, it's Be Scandalous. And also to the Hip Hop Jedi, if you could only see him use the force inappropriately. So, and other than that, I want to give a shout out to me. So, MASH, much love, much respect. Thank you for coming through. Big Dog, can I have your name once again? Real Testimony. Real Testimony. If you guys want to talk to him, he'll give you his testimony. Okay, so other than that... Um, uh, once again, everybody on the live chat, everybody who tuned in, everybody who liked, subscribed, commented, shared. Uh, once again, Rodin Radio, Tony Ye wouldn't be here without you guys. So I always want to give a shout out to Raza. Raza, follow once again, uh, Nocturnal. Uh, uh, um, the link is in the chat. You can follow him there. Let's build up his following. He just recently started his Instagram over again because some bullshit happened. So follow him again, support him. Let's go. Uh, Nocturnal, thank you for being here. Oh, no problem, buddy. Thank you, Carnal. And thank you for being yourself. And just thank you for speaking truth. And you know, the funny part is, you know what the world got to do? What's that? Take it easy. Because <laughs> it's the motherfucking knock. That's it. That's right. And we out of here. <laughs>